Hi, this is Will Walker with Sacred Heart Night Vision. I'm with uh, Coach Charles Dotson, the women's coach of the Lady Knights. Coach, uh, after a tough loss to Crockett, what are some things that y'all worked on uh, during the week? Uh, we mainly just worked on uh, trying to build our confidence up. Against Crockett County, we came out nervous and scared. But the first half, we kind of we kind of played down because we were nervous. So my thing this week was just building the confidence and just going over stuff we go over daily. Just keep building on it. So with uh, working on all of that during uh, the week, what are some expectations you have for your team tonight? To look a whole lot better than we did against Crockett County. That's the main thing. Uh, we're trying to handle their pressure. Crockett County pressed us a lot. Uh, TC is going to do the same thing. So our biggest focus really this week was uh, breaking the press. So uh, watching things on film, what are some things that stood out to you that the uh, Lady Lions did well? Uh, the Lady Lions, they go inside. They got a lot of height. Then they got four girls around 5'10 that started. So their biggest thing is their height and going inside. So we're just trying to pack it in a little bit where they can't go inside as easy. All right, so the big question, who were some players that uh, we need to watch out for tonight? Uh, I would say Malia Hughes and Caitlin Gill, both are freshmen. Both of those two girls are leading scorers. Uh, Malia's averaging around 12 and a half, and Caitlin's averaging 10 points a game. All right, well, thank you, Coach Dotson. I'll send it back to uh, Blake and Bray. All right, no problem. All right, good job, man. Thank you, Will Walker. Hello, Night Nation. This is our broadcast at Night Vision. I'm here alongside partner Bray Finney. Thank you. We are here for the Sacred Heart Lady Knights versus the Trinity Lady Lions game. This should be a good one. We are T minus 40, 440, and tip off should be underway soon. What are some of your takeaways for this game? Well, both these teams are very competitive, and um, coming off that loss from um, Crockett County, um, the girls on both teams have similar losses from last week, and we just we've got to be better than them tonight, and um, we just have to execute better, and we'll end up winning the ball game. Sacred Heart really needs to start setting screens for others, rolling off picks, cutting inside. I think that's the key uh, to their success. For Trinity to win, they need to drive inside and make it draw fouls and just make your free throws, really. Pretty much, yes. They just got to get in their head and um, just get a bunch of fouls from Sacred Heart. But that's the way. That's that's going to be the biggest way to win is the the team that has the most fouls and you know just not executing very well that will be the team that ends up losing today because these teams are going to fight hard and they're both very competitive free throws are not always free but if you get too many of them that can really help or hurt your team depends on you know them making them um they just have to make them um they just have to be accurate if they want to make some points off you know, this trinity team we are going up against it only has one freshman and one sophomore. The others are juniors and seniors. Do you think Sacred Heart can uh, show off their youth and possibly defeat the Gladiator? I think they can, honestly. Um, they may have a young bunch, but, uh, you know, they're competitive. They're young, and um, most of their freshmen are making plays and averaging almost 20 points a game. So I think it's a good chance that we can – Take down, Trinity. Sacred Heart is, I think in my opinion, they will mainly, they will either drive in or they will try and shoot off-screen threes. I don't think they're going to go mid-range at all. No, I don't think so. Um, they're just not, they don't have, they need to get under the goal because they have Grace Creasy and Brianna under there, and um, they're both tall. They're both the tallest people on the team, so they're going to have to give them the ball a lot if they're going to get, some points on the board. They do have very great post scores, but we do also have some very good three-point shooters. Yes, um, we do, we do, we do. Trinity has strength in numbers and experience. They will probably try and go low, try and get those little post-ups because they, let's face it, they have size. They're a lot taller than us. That they do. That they do. We're gonna have to play faster than them if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna keep up. Cause 
they're taller than most of the girls that we have on the team. We just have to be more athletic, and we have to play the game clean. We have to get in their heads. They have to foul us, and we have to make points off what they do. So, The Lady Knights have been struggling here. What do you think they should do? Do you think they should trust the process or try and force the ball more? Well, I mean, they really need to trust the process because – they went undefeated their very first game, and that was a dominant performance. Um, uh, freshmen, they made a lot of points, and uh, most of them are young freshmen, so they're going to have to show out, and the seniors and juniors are going to have to lead them. Tip-off is almost underway, and we'll send it to you. We are underway in Omen Arena. Two teams that are both struggling look to find a strong win here tonight. Let's see who can pull this out. It should be a good one. Sacred Heart versus Trinity, underway. And a little pregame talk by Sacred Heart. Yep. Tip-off is underway, and Trinity wins the ball. Trinity driving up court. Set a play. Pass down to the post. Drives into the post. Misses. Rebound by Sacred Heart. Hughes drives up court. Trying to get that fast offense going. Pass down to Marks. Marks puts it in for the easy layup. That's what I talked about. Sacred Heart with the early lead. Let's see what Trinity can do now. Pass out to the perimeter. Back to the other side. Pulls up for the mid-range step back. Good and that's Good Macy shot. Lee who gets the two. He's passed down to Mark. It's intercepted. Trinity driving up court. Pass to the mid-range. Shoots, misses, second chance. Puts it up, and good. Trinity good, gets good the team. second chance. Good teamwork by Trinity there. Sacred Heart's got to keep their cool. Can't turn the ball over like that. They just have to stay athletic. Looking to get these two points back. Malia Hughes. Ooh, what a move. Pass to Gill. Gill pump fakes. Creasy with the layup. That's what we talked about, Blake. Get under the goal with Creasy and Brianna. That will make points for you. Both teams playing post and drive in. Pass out, almost, almost turnover. And that's a three. It's a pretty three right there. That is Howell, the junior. Use a point again. Let's see. Gill goes off the motion. Gets double teamed. Hughes gets fumbled. Oh, and that looked like that will be jump ball, and that's second hard possession. You got to stay tough there. You got to stay tough there. 7 4, 6 0, 1 in the first period. They just have to keep their cool. They just have to go with the flow. They can't, they just can't melt down. Don't force turnovers. Let's see. Hughes double teamed. On oh, it, stripped away. 
That's Howell. Pass to Lee. Puts it in and a foul with a free throw to go. Jasmine on that foul. Now, this is what we talked about. They're wanting to. They're wanting to get to the line as much as they can. Miss the free throw. Marks gets the rebound. Good rebound. Let's see what Hughes and the offense can do. Just take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. She's double teamed yet again. Fumbles it. Pass to Gill. And a little scramble for it. You know, Blake, Trinity's not going to make it easy on them. We've made it obvious that the two teams are going to be competitive. They want to win. They're hungry for these wins. Looks like a timeout by Sacred Heart. Now, what are you liking from the Sacred Heart and this Trinity team so far? Well, uh, from Sacred Heart's side, I'm liking how they're getting under the goal and they're giving the ball to Grace Creasy and Brianna Marks. They're going to produce points, but you have to make good passes. You have to make good passes. That's going to be key. Now, for Trinity, they just have to keep playing dominant. They, they're playing good defense right now, keeping pressure on Sacred Heart. They just have to keep playing dominant, these two teams. And Coach had a little talk with, with the Knights, and the other coach had to talk with the Lady Lions. Let's see what they can do. Hughes looking to set something up. Oh, and she ah. misses it. And that's a backcourt. Lions will maintain possession. Have to keep control of the ball. Have to. It's not going to be much of a game if you keep making turnovers like this. They have to go with the flow. Have Trinity now on cool. offense. Jumper bounces up and then in. That is Emma Pag It's the tall girls we were talking about, Blake. Screen by Creasy. Gets it batted away, and they're driving up court. That's Macy Lee, and couldn't quite get the foul. That was but good that will be Lions ball. That was good defense by Jazz and Blankenship. Sometimes it's good to make turnovers for your team, but it has to be worth it. Little screen there. Corner three. Sinks. Drained it, drained it. That is the junior, Saley Howell. Just keep playing cool. They have to keep playing cool. 14-4 with 4.45 left at the first. Sacred Heart needing a bucket right now. She's needing to pass right now. And that looks like a foul on Sacred Heart. Uh, excuse me, Trinity. It'll be Gill on the inbound. Just keep good possession of the ball. That's all they need to do. Hughes gets double teamed yet again. Shoots it and is blocked. That would be Trinity driving up court. Puts it in, almost got the foul, but couldn't quite get it. Trinity starting to roll. Sacred Heart has to play better. They have to. They cannot keep producing turnovers like this. That is the senior Maxfield on the bucket. Screen by Creasy. Pass back to the perimeter to Gill. Stolen away by Howell. Pass down the post, couldn't quite get it. Drives in, open mid-range. Clanks, but here's a second chance and puts it in. That is Emma, the junior. She's tough under the goal, Blake. 18-4 with 3.45 left in the first. Both teams have one foul. Not quite the game we were expecting. Wow. And turned over again. On oh, the pass is just off, and, the, and Sacred Heart will get the possession again. We have a sub in. That is Alyssa and Anderson French. This is and where this looks is where, like a timeout. This is where you have to get the ball inside the block. This is where you have to produce points. This team, this Trinity team, is not going to make it easy for you because they're big, they're fast, and they're athletic. Trinity really hasn't gone outside the three-point line much. Heck, I think they only have one three. And Sacred Heart has struggled on offense lately. Coach Dotson's looking to clear that up. 
But the Lions have 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 trapped Malia Hughes and and that's resulting in turnovers. Double teaming is it can be efficient, but it leaves a man wide open and it forces a lot of turnovers sometimes. They've already turned over the ball multiple times now. They have to secure it. They have to. And that is Doe for three. High off the glass. Miss it. Thompson gets the rebound. Gill drives in. Fumbled away. And Trini goes down the court. Layup is good. Uh, she should have been there under the goal, Blake. That is the junior who plays both forward and center. Pass to Gill. Ooh, gets that pass off to the blank chip. Doe drives in. Tipped out and stolen by Trinity. Wasn't a good pass. Wasn't a good decision. Macy Lee drive down court. Goes down to the post, loses it, and that will be out of bounds. That will be Sacred Heart ball. A bit too much on that ball right there. 2.52 left with 20 being Trinity and 4 being Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart does have a bonus, though, so they need to drive in a little more. Doe gets double teamed. Gill has the ball. Doe loses it for a second. Pass down to Creasy in the post and loses it. Trini going up court. Looking to drive in. Doesn't draw the foul. Gets the contested layup. Trini is just playing excellent defense at this point. That is the junior, Emma Hannaford. Doe gets the ball on the perimeter, starts driving in, loses it for a second, and that will be out of bounds. Trinity ball. 2.07 left with Trinity being 22 and Sacred Heart four. Just seems that Sacred Heart is playing unfocused. I mean, they're just not getting into the flow with this game. I mean, beginning they look kind of good, getting in the ball inside the box and producing points, but they just have to figure out that formula if they want to start producing points because it's 22 to four now. You gotta start to do something. We have a little under two minutes to go. And Sacred Heart looks to, excuse me, Trinity looks to space it out. Sacred Heart seals it away. That is Grace Creasy on the steal. That was good defense. Driving up court, pass to Doe. Doe drives in, spin move, all oh, and it's blocked. 139, Trinity 22, Sacred Heart four. It's always good to take the foul under the basket. And they have a bonus, too. Inbound out to the perimeter. Gets tossed in the air for a second. Blankenship for three. Oh, almost had it, but in and out. Dangerous pass, but almost got it off. It's a good-looking shot. Macy Lee for three. Doesn't get it. Thompson with the rebound. And that looks like a foul on Trinity. To me right now, Blake, you have to get the ball into side Asia Thompson's hands because she's a good ball handler and um, she can make some plays. Stolen away again on the double team by Trinity. And Trinity's looking to start something. Down to the post. Looks like there was a miscommunication and that will be Sacred Heart ball. I don't know what's up with these tall passes, Blake. I mean, these Trinity girls, I mean, they're about 5'10", 5'11". I mean, you're not going to be able to, you know, rainbow one or, you know, throw it right over their head. They're going to get their hands up. They are tall enough, but not that tall. Doe lobs it up to Creasy in the post. We have 49.4 seconds left. Trinity 22, Sacred Heart 4. Hopefully Sacred Heart can come back in the second period and have a, have a strong second period. Down to the post and gets fouled. That is Alyssa Gehring for these free throws. She's about 5'10". <laughs> 30 seconds, 37 seconds left and Trinity if they sink these free throws, they will go up by 20. Mm. She sinks the first one, looking to get these second one. Junior missed the second one. 
That is Doe on the rebound. Thompson brings it up court. Trying to lose her man. And that looks like Sacred Heart ball. Get the ball into Asia Thompson's hand. She's a good ball handler. 26 seconds left. And Trinity has a 19-point lead. Both teams have two fouls. And Sacred Heart just looking for answers right now. Trinity has played a monster defensive game. Gets double teamed. Pass down the post to Thompson. Blank shit passes to Doe. Doe for three and sinks it. That was a good shot right there, Blake. Good shot. First quarter almost over. Three by, three by Bond is off. And we go into the second quarter, 23 to seven. I think for Sacred Heart for at this point, Blake, they just got to start playing more dominant defense. They have to get on Trinity's level because Trinity has just been so dominant defensively. I think it all starts on the offense. I mean, I can't count how many turnovers they had, but we have got to start passing it more. We we had a few good possessions where we have passed it and passed it and passed it, but the double team just seems to throw our just throw the passing off. It's it's no doubt. I mean, it's been offensive problems. Um, they just have to handle the ball better in order you know, to produce points and possibly come back. I think we need more threes, if anything. That'll be our last hope of getting back in this game. But it's still possible, you know. I mean, Atlanta did blow a 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl. Watch out, Blake. I'm an Atlanta fan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Second quarter is just underway. Take it hard has got to spark some kind of fire in them. There we go. We got the clock fixed now. All right. Here we are underway. It's Howell with the ball guarded by also number 12, Gill. Past the perimeter. Trying to go down low in the post, and a that's a miscommunication, and that will be Sacred Heart ball. Well, good start to the first, to the second quarter. Take advantage of those. Sacred Heart get many looking in, improved. Not going to get many opportunities. Hughes drives down to the post. Pass to Gill and is blocked, but she gets the second chance and is also blocked. Oh, she missed the foul there. Looked like it might have been a foul. I mean, kind of missed it. Pass down to the post and is fouled. Oh, and travel, I mean. That is the junior, Hannaford. She's one of the team centers. Uh, bad pass, bad pass. Trinity looking to drive up court. Oh, and the Euro step is good. That is Macy Lee. <laughs> that was pretty, Blake. That's one of those uh, little Manu Ginobili's, you know, one of those... James Harden looks. Yep. Turnaround post move is no good by Doe. The height of this Trinity team. They just, they're not making it easy. It's scary. They're a bunch of towers. Three is clanked off the rim. Looking to go fast. And that's stolen away. Mesa Lee retains possession. Pass out of the perimeter. Goes to the other side. Open three. Clanked off the rim. Hughes gets the rebound. Looking to start something here. Running up court. Yeah, on, up. stolen away. But Blankenship gets the three off. No good. You got to be there for that rebound, Blake. And that layup is good. That is Hannaford, one of the team's centers. The junior. Sacred Heart looking to start something. And gets batted away, but that will be Sacred Heart ball. 6-10, 27-7. Trinity leaving by I mean, 20. It's, it's good that we get the ball like that, Blake, but, um, I mean, how many times have we talked about these passes? I mean, these are just these are not smart passes that Sacred Heart are just – they have to make better decisions. I mean, they can't 
you can't pass over a pretty decent sized tall girl, you know. Malia Hughes misses, and that is Macy Lee who drives in, gets the layup, and it is now 29 to seven. Malia Hughes drives in, and the mid-range jump and drive. That was a good jumper. True. That was a good jumper by Malia Hughes. It was, it was a pretty looking jumper. Sacred Heart now down by 20. Trinity looking to start something here. Three by Trinity is true. That is Sally Howell. This 32 Trinity to team, nine. This Trinity team came well prepared, Blake. It's obvious that they practice and they know they know their opponent looks like. I mean, they look like they've been studied and they're just playing excellent defense and they're shooting the ball very well tonight. Must have had a really good week in practice. Must have. Sacred Heart will get will get the ball at the Trinity turnover. Or they had the ball. Pass down to Malia Hughes who puts up the shot and is fouled. Sometimes it's worth to take the shot like that, Blake. I mean, even if you miss it, you possibly get a foul out of that and you get extra points. Malia Hughes with the chance to just give get, Sacred Heart. Just got to make them count. First one is off the rim. 5.01 left in the second period. 32 Trinity, Sacred Heart nine. Let's see if she can sink the second, and she does. It is now 10 to 32. Let's see what Trinity's gonna do on this play. That's out of the perimeter. And that is a three by Trinity. Clanked off the rim. Thompson gets the rebound. Second Hart looking to start some. And that will be a foul on Trinity, a pushing. Second Hart will get the inbound. Blake, to me, it just looks like they got to start playing press defense. They got to start getting in front of these girls because, I mean, they, it looks like they haven't been that aggressive on defense, you know? It's just they just backed up and they've let the ball right gone by them. And, you know, they just they have to play more aggressive. I have to. Out of bounds on Trinity. And Sacred Heart will get the ball back. Hopefully looking for an off-screen three here. Bat away. Thompson almost had it. Bat away again. Thompson recovers it. Pass down to Hughes. Mid-range jumper from the elbow. No good. Got to make those. Trinity rushing. Where else are they going to go? The post. Layup is good by Macy Lee. Messi Lee has had a great game so far, defensively and offensively, Blake. Like a Swiss Army knife, she has she's a all around she's an all around player. Second Hart will get the ball back. Bree marks down to the post. Oh, and it's blocked away. <laughs> that was a good block. Blocked by. We'll take the foul though. We'll take the foul. It is indeed a foul. No, it is not. It is a Sacred Heart inbound. Need to pass it out in a hurry. It's our ball again. Looked like Trinity had a little hand on it. Blank shit for the inbound. Malia Hughes drives in from the post and is fouled, but cannot get the jumper to go. So she is up for two free throws. It's always worth taking those fouls and taking those foul shots. Sacred Heart down by 24. Let's see if we can pull off the comeback. Free throw is good, 34-11 with 3.52 left in the second. Looks like they're subbing in. Malia Hughes doesn't get the second free throw. As Maxfield bringing it up court. Pass out to the perimeter. Pulls up from the elbow, clanked off the rim. Second chance bucket is good. And that is Taylor Maxfield, the senior. Sugar Hart's got to get down the, the basketball court faster than they do. They just look gassed right now. And they do not have as many players as Trinity, so that's one of our major weaknesses is 
fatigue and just not enough numbers. Charity does have good depth. Let's see what Second Heart can do here. Langship looking to start something. Pass down to Hughes near the elbow. Hughes drives in, passes out, and that will be Trinity Ball. Couldn't really find anyone there. Not sure who she was passing it to. I think she was passing it to Gill, but maybe just couldn't she, get it off. Maybe she moved. Trinity looking to continue their dominance. Trinity also looking to sub in. Almost an entirely new group, and that will be, looks like a push off on Trinity. And Trinity has a sub in. That is Thomason in. We also have Hannaford in. And Second Heart looking to hopefully get this offense rolling. Gill shoots the three, almost gets it. Rebound by Blankenship, puts it up for three, high off the glass, doesn't get it. Trinity looking to go up court. Almost stolen away. Three point, nope, pass down to the post and fouled. Looks like they're starting to play defense, Blake. That is Anna Hannaford that is foul, who is fouled by Bree Marks. First free throw is good. And Hannaford makes the second free throw true. It is 38 to 11 with 2.33 left in the second. Maybe we can get some points in this two minute warning. Just close the second half right. Lose the ball for a second but gets it back. Hughes has it. Looking to start some. Guarded tightly. Good spin move. Goes down the post. Gill pass to Blankenship. Blankenship for three. Doesn't get it. And Trinity goes down court. Out to the perimeter. Drives in. Back out to the perimeter. Gets a look, but is quickly closed off. Pass back out to the elbow. Pass across court. Wide open three point shot. Doesn't get it. Second chance by Trinity. See, they're gonna keep passing it around. Three point is no good. There Second Hart go. finally gets the rebound. Go. Gill goes up court, and that looks like a clear lane foul. That is Brooke Thomason fouling Gill. And that looks like another foul on Trinity. Trinity needs to be careful here before they get into some foul trouble. They are already sending Malia Hughes to the line. It'd be really nice if we can get some points. There's one minute and 19 seconds left. I mean, it'd be worth it. Trinity needs to be, Trinity needs to tread lightly because they put Sacred Heart in the bonus. They have seven fouls already with 119 left. Probably not enough time to give Sacred Heart the lead, but if they keep fouling like this the rest of the game, Sacred Heart is going to be at the line a bunch of times and you never know what can happen. Sacred Heart has been quite clean foul-wise, but turnover-wise, I mean, they've just turned the ball over several times tonight. And Trinity just passing the ball around. We're gonna get some down the court. They're looking to play a two-three zone, sort of. And pass down the post is almost intercepted. And now it's fumbled away. That is Gill who gets the ball. Passing it up court. Blankenship for three, doesn't quite get it. Rebound by Trinity, 40 seconds left. And tipped away by Hughes, but that will be second, uh, Trinity ball. Defense starting to get fired up, Blake. 
You know, it's better. It's just it's it would have been good if they would have played this dominant defense at the beginning of the game. Better late than never. Trinity for three and gets it. That is Destiny Bond, the junior. The rainbow shot. Just a high arcing shot. 20 seconds left, 41-13. Halftime is nearly approaching. Malia Hughes drives in. Pass out to Gill. Gill passes it to Gill. Blank ship starts to drive in. Pass down to Marks in the post, lose it. And that will be Trinity Ball with three seconds left. I don't think they can get a shot off here, but they can try. She was going to, she thought about it. And that is halftime from Omen Arena. Trinity 41, Sacred Heart 13. What are some takeaways from uh, Sacred Heart? What do they need to do better and what do they need to stop? Stop turning the ball over. That's been key in this game. They're just bad passing, air shots, and they just have to play better defense. I mean, they played good defense the last two minutes of the second quarter, but that doesn't much, that doesn't do much good since it's 40 to 13. But that, there's a way to produce points. I mean, they're still the game's not over yet. They still have two quarters left. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, Blake, but it's definitely possible. Don't stop believing, you know, like like that song says. What do you think Trinity needs to continue doing or stop doing? I think they need to keep playing dominant defense. I mean, they have been all over the court on Sacred Heart. And, I mean, it's a lot of it because their depth and their size advantage. But either way, I mean, they play dominant defense. And they've made their shots. They've made, um, I mean, multiple threes, multiple jumpers. And uh, they've made all their shots count. And they just, I mean, Sacred Heart, just play good defense. Trinity has played very very well post offense and post defense in that matter but the thing with S Sacred Heart they are getting to the line they are putting Trinity in foul trouble that is I mean Sacred Heart's been clean off fouls they've had a couple they've had a couple the two or three but I mean Trinity's has at least five and I mean I mean they just got they just gotta keep playing clean you know they played a clean game it's just the turnovers. Turnovers have been key in this game, and they just have got to get better. And Coach has got to set some kind of formula in this game. Maybe give it to a different ball handler or put someone else under the post. Or, you know, they've just got to, they just got to create some kind of formula to get rolling. If anything, if I were the coach, I appreciate our post offense, but I would rather go shooting threes because – Shooting threes is not always the key to getting back in a game, but it can help. And then go back to that post office because in the post they are shutting us down. And the only way we can score is getting to the line by getting fouled. That's true. They just got to make they just got to make threes. I mean, you're right about that. I believe they make multiple points off that, but they have to make them. That's going to be key. All right, we'll send it to you. I'm Miller Boyd. I'm Grace Creasy. Welcome to Night Vision. Today we will be discussing many things that are happening throughout school in the next coming weeks from tests to exams. We just got off Thanksgiving break. How was yours? I was, it was good. How about you? It was nice. I just hung out with my brother mostly. He's back in town, but he went back. Um, anyways, coming up in school, we only have six days left. So any tests that you need to make up, any homework that you haven't done, I suggest you get it done. Uh, other than that, we got our exam schedule. And our exam schedule will be next Monday we have a full day of classes, and then Tuesday the 11th we'll have first and second period exams. Wednesday the 12th will be third and fourth period exams, and Thursday the 13th will be fifth and sixth, and Friday the 14th will be seventh period exams. There's also play tryouts next Monday and Tuesday. And now we will go to Caitlin about the new rules. 
Thank you, Grace. This is Caitlin Gill from Sacred Heart Light Vision. I'll be talking about the new rules that were issued this week. You are not allowed to be out of uniform or that will be issued in a demerit. You must wear your school shirt underneath your SHJ jackets during school. Boys must wear ties. No headphones during school except in Miss Cole's art room because she has been given permission by Miss Kill. If they are found, they will be taken away. No bringing Starbucks or Sonic cups dur during school. Only clear water bottles are allowed. Thank you, Caitlin, for giving us the update on the rules this week. And following up on that, our student body has expressed its concerns with our, new, with our winter uniforms. And so now we will go to Jake Wilson for our report on the uniforms. Thanks, Miller. Thanks, Grace. Hi, this is Jake Wilson from Night Vision. And over the past week, I've asked 10 different members of our student body if they like our uniforms or not. And they said that they were, all, uh, they were okay. But then I thought, what could we change about that? And next week, I'll have that for you. Thank you, Jake Wilson, for your update on the winter uniforms, and we'll see you next week with your new ideas on what kind of uniforms we should be wearing in the coming year. Okay, and now we will go to Breezy Bray for our weekly weather update. Thank you, Grace. Good morning, Sacred Heart. It is Breezy Bray here with the weather forecast. Temperatures will start warming back up on Thursday, and the highs and the lows in the mid-50s. Rains will enter our forecast while temperatures will continue warming up into a trend Friday into Saturday with the highs in the 60s on Friday and reaching in the low 70s. Keep a close eye on this 24-hour period because there may be severe weather hitting our area. Sunday, the sun comes back up. Temperatures will return to the mid-60s. However, by Sunday night, temps dip back down to the 40s again. Back to you, Grace. Thanks, Breezy, for the weather update. And now on to Blake Biggs and Will Walker for sports. Hi, I'm Blake Biggs. I'm Will Walker. And we're here with Night Vision to recap this week in sports. Saturday, as we were enjoying our Thanksgiving leftovers, we played Corneth in a tough battle where we only lost by three, 55-52. Then the next Monday, we played Crockett County, and we won 97 to 67. Our girls also played Crockett County, but we ended up coming short. This Friday, the Knights will take on TCA. Then the following Monday, the girls will have a uh, home game against Madison Academic. Then that following Tuesday, December 4th, both teams will go down to FACS and on, uh, on the road open up their district play. And then Friday will be a huge rivalry game against USJ, and that is December the 7th. And thank you, Blake Biggs and Will Walker, for that great sports update. And now we'll be moving on to it with an interview with a silver-haired man named Mr. Ed, as we like to call him around school. I will be interviewing him about just who he is as a person and everything that he does. I mean, he helps us out around school more than we can appreciate him for, and so I just figured I should give him an interview and see what, what he's all about. I'm Miller Boyd here with Ed Salonis, and we are in... Mr. Ed's office, Mr. Ed, how long have you been? Uh, <laughs> how long have you been working here at Sacred Heart? Year and a half, mm -hmm. almost two. I started in um, April of sixteen, mm -hmm. so it's close to three now. Cool. Um, so, what exactly do you do around our school? Whatever I am told to do. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'm just keep make sure everything is is running properly. Mm -hmm. If something needs fixed, I'll fix it. If I can't, then uh, we'll find somebody. But most of the time, I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And most of the freshmen uh, don't remember Mr. Ed a year before now, but he used to have long, flowing, luscious, silver-white hair. Uh -huh. So what what prompted the change, Mr. Ed? I got tired of it. Really? I did. I did. Um, I was going to do it if LSU beat Alabama, and then they <laughs> didn't. that didn't happen. So uh, I just said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> This is an old look. I mean, this is what mm -hmm. I used to wear before that. Mm -hmm. So I've been wearing a flat top for years and a goatee. You know, that's me. That's cool. So, I mean, you maintain the school and you got to maintain yourself. It makes sense. Makes sense. Uh -huh. So, so what's, your, what's your favorite part about your day-to-day -day at Sacred Heart? There's nothing normal. There's nothing that I do every day, same thing. Mm -hmm. There's something different every day. That's awesome. It is. Uh, favorite thing would be actually be working on the ball fields. <laughs> really just 
cutting grass and hanging out? Cutting grass. That's awesome. All right, well, I'm Miller Boyd, and I'm here with Ed Salonis, and this is Night Vision. We are back from halftime. Score is 41-13. We are about to start the third period. And let's see what Sacred Heart can do. Not turn the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. And let's see if we can overcome this 28-point lead coming into half. 15 seconds until halftime. And we have a very competitive game from both sides, just some crucial mistakes by the other. Defensively, that's for Trinity. And maybe offensively. So, <laughs> I don't know if it's competitive, just Trinity's so dominant under the goal. They do have the size advantage and yeah. strength in numbers. We are underway in the third period in Omen Arena. See what's the game plan from Sacred Heart. They need just they've got to play better. They've got to play better ball, you know. Can't say it more than once. Let's see if Sacred Heart has a new game plan and we are underway. T minus eight minutes. And that ball is fumbled out of bounds. That will be Sacred Heart ball. Looks like it got tipped away by Sally Howell. Blankship looking to set something up. Drives in, but can't get past the perimeter. Thompson gets it. Tries to drive in, but it's tightly guarded. Just passing the ball around, like we said. Jasmine with the cut. Three's oh, no good. Almost. Oh, that was a great cut, but couldn't get the three to fall. They passed, 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 and that was good. I mean, that's good chemistry. It was good play call, too. It really was. They're coming in with a good game plan. They just got to execute. Just sort of went through that back door and cut out and tried to shoot a three. It looked like she tipped it when Jasmine tried to shoot. Looked like they have made some heavy changes com coming out of half. Trini looking to pass it around. Pass out to the perimeter, and that is a walk. That is how the junior who walks, and Sacred Heart does get the ball. 7-0-4, 41-13, Trinity. Take advantage of those. Take advantage of those. Blankenship and company looking to set up comp to look looking to set up shop, and that is tipped away. That will be Sacred Heart ball. Again, good defense, good defense. Especially Sally Howell. I mean, she's gotten multiple turnovers and, I mean, produced turnovers, but defense turnovers would pay off. Loses the ball, almost gets the backcourt violation, but saves it last second. Guarded tightly. Looking to set up a play. Gill drives in, and that's blocked. That will be second heart ball. 41 13, 6 33 left in the third. Sacred Heart's chances are diminishing of as the time passes along. Looks like she passed it right by to Macy Hill. Right two. Good pass, definitely. Trinity looking to set up some, a few screens. In the corner, goes down the post. Drives in, doesn't quite get the foul, but that is two points. They continue to still be dominant offensively under the basket and under. That is Sally Howe, who has been everywhere on defense and on offense. Trinity just seems to have those Swiss Army knife players who are just all-around players. They've come in with a great game plan, Blake. Defensively and offensively, I mean, they made most of their shots. They played great defense against Sacred Heart, which is a pretty decent offense. Gill at the elbow, looking to set something up. Thompson gets it. Tightly guarded. Looking to drive in. Wants to get it, get this little Euro step. 
doesn't quite get the foul there. She took contact, and Macy Lee wow. drives in for the layup. Macy Lee has been outstanding tonight, Blake. She's, she's been, been great on offense. She's been everywhere. 45-13, all Trinity right now. Gill looking to get something, and that's a timeout by Sacred Heart looking to just change something up right here. Need to be timeout. Coach needs to tell them to keep their cool. Don't force turnovers. Just keep the ball, pass it, make your shots, and just keep up with the chemistry. As time passes, it looks like Trinity has almost got this game in the back. There's still a little hope, but not much. Yeah, not that much. But you never know what can happen. You really can't. You really can't. Five minutes left in the full fourth quarter. If Trinity just goes full off the gas pedal, you never know. Sacred Heart could just come driving in and steal the show. It take a lot of heart, and that's what we have. <laughs> I see what you did there. 5-14 left in the third quarter, 45-13. All Trinity right now. Blank chip looks to set something up. Screen by Gill. Marks goes off it. And guarded tightly by Macy Lee. Continuing to play dominant defense. These starters have been out here for a long time for Trinity. And Sacred Heart has a little sub in. Blank chip looks to drive in. Gill fakes it. Creasy down to the post. Drives up. Doesn't get it to go. That was a high arcing shot. Four and a half minutes to go from Omen. 45-13. There's a screen for Trinity. And wide open three. And sinks it. That is Sally Howell. Again, Sally Howell playing dominant offense and defense. Just like Macy Lee. She's been one of the stars in this team. Ooh, continuing. Both players have played out of their mind right now, both on offense and defense. Without these, Trinity would, I wouldn't say they'd be struggling, but they would definitely need them. Oh, man. Sally Howell just continues to just say no whenever Sacred Heart tries to get a pass on. Just do that. The Kimbe Matumbo. No, no, no. Continuing. And Sacred Heart gets the possession again. She is putting pressure on blanket shit. Too much. Gill gets the inbound three off. Clanked off the rim, and Trinity gets possession, looking to drive up court. And it looks like we have a huge sub in right now. Five people to be exact. Three is no good. Gill gets the rebound. Pass to Marks. Gill gets it. Blankenship open from the corner. Doesn't get it. Trinity gets the rebound. Storming up court. Drives. And down to the post. And what did you expect? Another post play. And that is a timeout for Sacred Heart. Just looking. I wouldn't say to try and come back, but just end on a positive note. Really, really. I mean... You can at least get about 20 points before the game's over with. I mean, Trinity's just played an excellent game today, and they've just had a great game plan, and their defense has just been fast on the basketball court. They've just played like they were the better team today, just from the tip, and that is blocked away. And that's a jump ball, and Trinity will get possession. Another turnover by Sacred Heart. They're definitely going to want to practice that this week. Turnovers and passing. Everything else is fine. Almost takes the three right there. Gill goes up court. Gets it stolen back away, but that will be Sacred Heart ball. 156 left in the third. 50-13. to 13. Trying to make something happen there. 
just the depth of Trinity's defense is they just keep gnawing. Sacred Heart just need oh. It wasn't, wasn't a great pass. And she drives wasn't in. Wasn't a great shot. Couldn't quite get the foul as she was hoping. Down to the post. Turn around. No good. Clanked high off the rim. And that's Doe driving up, of course. Blankenship fakes the three, passes out to Gill, who gets the three, almost made it from the parking lot. And pass down the post, Wide does a open. little fake move, and just puts it in. Made it look too easy. That is Emma Hannaford, who's played great on offense tonight. At this point, Sacred Heart just wants to get in the lane, draw the foul, and just shoot free throws. If if that's the case, we might have a game, but if there's any doubt at all, it well, looks like Tennessee, I mean, not Tennessee, Trinity <laughs> will win this game. This is Gill for the free throws. First one is true. Twenty seconds left. Doesn't quite get the the second one to fall. And that is batted away by Gill. Good defensive play. So Sacred Heart knees right now. Under ten seconds to go. Turnover by Sacred Heart. Looks like a miscommunication right there. Yeah. And misses the layup. And that will not be enough time to get the second chance points. That is the end of the third quarter. 52-14. Trinity domination. She was looking for a foul there at the end, but uh, couldn't quite get it. She needs to look at the score. <laughs> 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 it doesn't really matter at this point, but yeah, it was it was a hard fought game by both sides. If there was any doubt at all, Trinity will take this. Will not only steal this game, but absolutely statement. Just an absolute statement. statement. You're right. Statement game. I mean, they've only hold them to 14 points, and it's the beginning of the, well, almost the beginning of the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they've scored 50 points, which is not that bad. <laughs> fourth quarter is underway. Looks like Trinity, no, Sacred Heart will get possession. Just looking to end on a positive note. Now, this Sacred Heart team, they play a bunch of freshmen and sophomores, so they do not have the experience that, say, Trinity has because Trinity only has one freshman and one sophomore on this team. So this Trinity team is by far much more older and experienced, and they have size two. Greasy with the with the floater cannot get the shot to go from the elbow. Trinity look at lob down the post, and that is Emma Hannaford. What we've seen all night, Blake, they're getting it under the basket. Just chipping away at them, just playing that old style of basketball. And that is a three that is no good. Or might have been a two. Couldn't see your foot. And we talked about that'd be key, getting the ball into the basket and making points for whoever did it the most, Blake, and whoever played the best defense. And clearly, Trinity has made a statement. I mean, experienced team, depth, and girls that want to play. That creates a, you know. A good team. A good team. You're right. We may look at turnovers as the main problem for Sacred Heart this Oof, game, but yeah. really it's that shoddy field goal percentage. It hasn't been the best. I mean, Sacred Heart, I mean, after this game, their next practice, they have to work on chemistry and not turning the ball over because tonight they have just not 
made good work of handling the ball well. And Trinity just really brought that, you know, that heat, that pressure with the double team. Then they sort of eased off that with a little man-to-man. -man. And that is Emma Hannaford who scores it down in the post. But, yeah, this second hard offense, it – It's struggled, but, I mean – this Trinity defense, they've not made it easy for them at all. Um, they just have height advantage, depth advantage, and everything that you want in the defense, and they just played a great game. But this Sacred Heart team, it is a young team, and like we said earlier before the game, just trust the process as Trinity gets another bucket. That is Hannah Yarbrough. Those are her first points of the game. There's no doubt that this is a growing team. I mean, this team – will do nothing but get better but today Trinity got the better of them and you know they've used their experience and their size to win this game yeah just trust the process I mean even through the year we'll, we'll get better as Gill gets the two to go nice drive but as I was talking about every week every day we get better Put in the work. Put yeah, in the work. just put in that grind. Almost thrown away by Gill. Tipped out. Trinity looking to start something. Pass down the post. That's Hannaford who dribbles and drives. Does not get it. Point keep away. It's all they're doing. Rebound by Creasy. Gill looking to start up court. But, yes, by the time these are seniors and juniors, this could be a really good team. Yes, they do not have the size, but we could possibly see some – we can see some improvement. We can see some more spacing at three-point shooting. Speaking of three-point shooting, here is Gill with the three that misses. But also Gill gets the foul and the one. And Sacred Heart with, with this free throw will be in spitting distance of 20 points. And that is no good. Rebounded by Hannaford. Thomason looking to bring it up court. Pass back to French. Down the post, it's Hannaford. Drives in. Almost had that perimeter to three, but couldn't get it. Pass down to Hannaford. Just wide open for mid-range. Doesn't get it. Second chance. Puts it up. Can't get it. Gill with the rebound. That wasn't a great shot for him there. Yeah, it was just a slow sort of non-dominant hand looking shot. You never want to shoot those slow and awkward shots. Yeah. Let's see if Sacred Heart could get to 20 points. Trinity just really trying to play defense for bragging rights just to say, hey, we held Sacred Heart to under 20 points. You know, that, be, that may be worth that yeah. brag but, Must be worth more in the future. Yeah, but you have to respect them. I mean, they played excellent tonight, and uh, they've just they've dominated the court, just to say the least. I mean, I keep on saying it. That's pretty much what they've done. Yeah. They've just had great defensive depth and offensive depth, and they just played Two and excellent. a half minutes are gone, and Gill with the miss mid-range jumper. Air shot by Creasy. Trinity looking to not add a fuel to the fire, but just move the ball around. Misses the wide open short range layup. And that looks like a foul on Sacred Heart. I don't know why Trinity's trying to, you know, get some more shots in. I mean, at this point, you just want to play keep away, you know? I mean, the scores, you're up by 40 points. And, I mean, I mean, it's good to get some shot off, shots off. It's good to get some practice shots off. But, I mean, you would think at this point they'd just play keep away, you know. They do have a younger group in with some of the bench unit coming in for Trinity. And maybe they're just trying to, you know, play together, work up some chemistry. And speaking of chemistry. That's how you do it right the there. The pass from Bond to Thomason gets them the three. That is now a 43-point lead with under a minute to go. Gill looks at drives in. And that is high off the glass. Looks like that's a jump ball for 
Sacred Heart. Maybe, yeah, but say. Or, yeah, Sacred Heart jump, jump ball. But as I said it earlier, they're just trying to build up some chemistry, get some experience in, because not every day you have a, a performance like this from your team. Mm -mm, no. It's just turnovers has been the key in this game. I mean, you can clearly see that they've been dominant under the goal. They've just they've dominated Sacred Heart. But, I mean, Sacred Heart, you have to give them that they don't have much depth, and they're still a growing team. I'll give them that. I mean, they had a good win. Blankenship hits the three and brings Sacred Heart to 21 points. They did hit that 20 mark as 20 seconds are left. And three by Trinity, flanked off the rim. That is out of bounds, and Sacred Heart will get it. Under 10 seconds to go and just look into. Buzzer beater three by Jasmine Blankenship. We'll see. Step back, mid-range. Ah, doesn't get it. Our final from Omen, 63-21. to 21. Trinity with a huge win to turn their season around. They go to 2-2. Two two. It was a great game. Just great game by both sides. I mean, they tried their hardest to get back into this ball game, but Trinity continued, continued to play dominant defense, and they used their depth and their height to their advantage, but... I mean, Sacred Heart, they showed a lot today, but just Trinity got the better of them. Sacred Heart did play with a lot of heart, but their inexperience and lack of size really did lead to this this tough loss to Trinity. It really did, and, and turnovers were key in this game. Um, you, they, just, they just have to work on that, and they have to work on shooting. I mean, they didn't shoot very well today. Uh, they have to make – those turnovers count that they get from the opposing team. I mean, that, 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 you know, I mean, it was, it was, a, this was a lesson well learned from Sacred Heart. I mean, they played good, but they had to play better in these types of games. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a tough game, but definitely something to learn to from. build off of, and just. And they can, they can. I mean, I'm not counting this team out yet. They're yeah. still pretty good. They're in good shape. It's the beginning of the season. I mean, it, nothing to worry about. Nothing it's to just, worry about. Just learn from your mistakes. That's all it is. And, and what? And once you get those those kinks, those kinks uh, worked out, you can possibly have a playoff run or run to the playoff. Yeah, just back to the drawing board. That's all it is. I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna say they played the best they can tonight. It's just Trinity was – I've never seen quite a defense like this. Just using their turnovers to their advantage and um, basically just getting under the goal and making their shots count, and they made them count, and it was just a dominant performance from them. I'm Blake Biggs. I'm signing off with my partner. Bray Finney. Back to the broadcast. I'm Miller Boyd. I'm Grace Creasy. Welcome to Night Vision. Today we will be discussing many things that are happening throughout school in the next coming weeks, from tests to exams. We just got off Thanksgiving break. How was yours? I was. It was good. How about you? It was nice. I just hung out with my brother mostly. He's back in town, but he went back. Um, anyways, coming up in school, we only have six days left, so any tests that you need to make up, any homework that you haven't done, I suggest you get it done. Uh, other than that, we got our exam schedule. And our exam schedule will be next Monday we have a full day of classes, and then Tuesday the 11th we'll have first and second period exams. Wednesday the 12th will be third and fourth period exams, and Thursday the 13th will be fifth and sixth, and Friday the 14th will be seventh period exams. There's also play tryouts next Monday and Tuesday. And now we will go to Caitlin about the new rules. Thank you, Grace. This is Caitlin Gill from Sacred Heart Night Vision. I'll be talking about the new rules that were issued this week. You are not allowed to be out of uniform or that will be issued in a demerit. You must wear your school shirt underneath your SHJ jackets during school. Boys must wear ties. 
no headphones during school except in Miss Cole's art room because she has been given permission by Miss K. If they are found, they will be taken away. No bringing Starbucks or Sonic cups dur during school. Only clear water bottles are allowed. Thank you, Caitlin, for giving us the update on the rules this week. And following up on that, our study body has expressed its concerns with our, new, with our winter uniforms. And so now we will go to Jake Wilson for our report on the uniforms. Thanks, Miller. Thanks, Grace. Hi, this is Jake Wilson from Night Vision. And over the past week, I've asked 10 different members of our student body if they like our uniforms or not. And they said that they were all, uh, they were okay. But then I thought, what could we change about that? And next week, I'll have that for you. Thank you, Jake Wilson, for your update on the winter uniforms. And we'll see you next week with your new ideas on what kind of uniforms we should be wearing in the coming year. Okay, and now we will go to Breezy Bray for our weekly weather update. Thank you, Grace. Good morning, Sacred Heart. It is Breezy Bray here with the weather forecast. Temperatures will start warming back up on Thursday, and the highs and the lows in the mid-50s. Rains will enter our forecast while temperatures will continue warming up into a trend Friday into Saturday with the highs in the 60s on Friday and reaching in the low 70s. Keep a close eye on this 24-hour period because there may be severe weather hitting our area. Sunday, the sun comes back up. Temperatures will return to the mid-60s. However, by Sunday night, temps dip back down to the 40s again. Back to you, Grace. Thanks, Breezy, for the weather update. And now on to Blake Biggs and Will Walker for sports. Hi, I'm Blake Biggs. I'm Will Walker. And we're here with Night Vision to recap this week in sports. Saturday, as we were enjoying our Thanksgiving leftovers, we played Corneth in a tough battle where we only lost by three, 55-52. Then the next Monday, we played Crockett County, and we won 97 to 67. Our girls also played Crockett County, but we ended it up coming short. This Friday, the Knights will take on TCA. Then the following Monday, the girls will have a uh, home game against Madison Academic. Then that following Tuesday, December 4th, both teams will go down to FACS and on, uh, on the road open up their district play. And then Friday will be a huge rivalry game against USJ, and that is December the 7th. And thank you, Blake Biggs and Will Walker, for that great sports update. And now we will be moving on to it with an interview with a silver-haired man named Mr. Ed, as we like to call him around school. I will be interviewing him about just who he is as a person and everything that he does. I mean, he helps us out around school more than we can appreciate him for, and so I just figured I should give him an interview and see what, what he's all about. I'm Miller Boyd here with Ed Salonis, and we are in... Mr. Ed's office, Mr. Ed, how long have you been? Uh, <laughs> how long have you been working here at Sacred Heart? Year and a half, mm -hmm. almost two. I started in um, April of sixteen, mm -hmm. so it's close to three now. Cool. Um, so, what exactly do you do around our school? Whatever I am told to do. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I just keep make sure everything is is running properly. Mm -hmm. If something needs fixed, I'll fix it. If I can't, then uh, we'll find somebody. But most of the time, I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And most of the freshmen uh, don't remember Mr. Ed a year before now, but he used to have long, flowing, luscious, silver-white hair. Uh -huh. So what what prompted the change, Mr. Ed? I got tired of it. Really? I did. I did. Um, I was going to do it if LSU beat Alabama, and then they didn't. that didn't happen. So uh, I just said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> This is an old look. I mean, this is what mm -hmm. I used to wear before that. Mm -hmm. So I've been wearing a flat top for years and a goatee. You know, that's me. That's cool. So, I mean, you maintain the school and you got to maintain yourself. It makes sense. makes sense. Uh -huh. So, so what's, your, what's your favorite part about your day-to-day -day at Sacred Heart? There's nothing normal. There's nothing that I do every day, same thing. Mm -hmm. There's something different every day. That's awesome. It is. Uh, favorite thing would be actually be working on the ball fields. <laughs> really just cutting grass and hanging out cutting grass that's awesome all right well i'm miller boyd and i'm here with ed salonis and this is night vision Thank you. 
Welcome to Sacred Heart Night Vision. We are covering the boys game against TCA. How do you think the game's going to go tonight, Will Walker? I know. I mean, I'm excited. This is going to be a very uh, interesting game. Two uh, teams that are extremely close together, less than three-fourths of a mile apart. It's going to be very exciting. Lots of tension. I'm just gonna be excited to see how it's going to play out. I'm just going to say this before I catch any hate. I still don't know a, a thing about basketball, but it's going to be great. It's going to be a great time. We're just going to be out here having fun broadcasting this game. TCA gets the ball. We can see number one, Eli Cross, moving his way up the court. He's getting pressured by Aiden Madwell. He passes it to number 11, and that is Riley Graves. And Riley Graves passes to number 20, which is Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt shoots. Uh, he, does, he doesn't make the ball, and that is going to be a Sacred Heart ball. And there it is early in the game, making uh, the TCA Lions make a, uh, take a shot that, that early in shot clock that uh, they might not want to take. It's good defense right there by the Sacred Heart Knights. Isaac Northcutt passes it in to number 22. Or is that a 32? I don't know. I can't tell. Kevin Marcel making his way up to the court. He passes the ball to Aiden Madwell. Aiden Madwell shoots. He doesn't make it. However, Tariq Williamson gets the rebound, giving our Sacred Heart Knights two points. And there it is, the physicality of Tariq Williams. Gets inside, gets an offensive rebound, puts it back in for an and one. That's a huge play to get Sacred Heart on the board first. Let's see how Tariq Williams um, makes these goals. Sorry, I kind of fumbled over my words right there. He shoots. He scores. An extremely good free throw shooter. You're going to see him on the line a lot tonight. Number one, Eli Cross is making some serious moves up the, up the court. The ball is getting passed around amongst all the Lions. And it get, gets back to Eli Cross, and he shoots, and he misses. But Tariq Williams with the rebound, and he passes to Kevin Marcel. Kevin Marcel is rushing the net. He shoots it, and it goes right over, caught by a Lion. But there is... Something, something on that play. I don't yeah, no, that'll be a, a foul. Yeah, that'll be a foul, I believe, on uh, TCA. That was just a killer crossover there by Kevin Marcel, just taking ankles and then getting to the basket, drawing contact, and getting to the line. Kevin Marcel with uh, two free throw shots. Shoots the first one, and that is a, that is one point for our Sacred Heart Knights. Oh, he has to tie his shoe again. I mean, I love these shoes. They're bright. I don't really understand them. Uh, they don't. They don't really fit the theme, the maroon and white theme. But See, that's what I like about it. I think I. I think it's awesome to have something that just stands out. He winds up. He shoots, and he misses, and it's recovered by the Lions. Number 15, Samuel Favara. He passes it to number three, Reed Chapman, and then number 32, Braden Salee gets the ball and he shoots it but he misses and is rebounded by a line. Number 15, Samuel Favara goes up for a shot but he misses and it's rebounded by our Knights. Tariq Williams passes to Aiden Madwell and Aiden Madwell drains a three. A beautiful up court pass by Tariq Williams. Big man showing off the handles. Eli Cross applying some pressure on Kevin Marcel but it's okay because Kevin Marcel's applying equal pressure back. Eli Cross, I don't know, I'm sorry. Eli Cross, <laughs> yeah, he loses the ball, and that's going to be a, is that going to be a Knights ball? I'm not sure. I believe it's going to be uh, out on the Knights, so Trinity's going to retain possession. <sighs> One can only wish. I don't even know what that was. That, okay. <laughs> he completely threw it over the guy's head. Yeah, that was, I don't know if that was the best pass right there. Anyways, Levi Cottrell passes the ball to Samuel Favara. Samuel Favara gives it to number 32. Number 32 gives it to 10, or 11, rather. And it goes back to Isaac Northcutt. He goes up for a, for a goal, a layup, rather, and he misses. It's going to be a free throw shot for the Lions. Yeah, that'll be the uh, first foul for the Knights. That'll be on Tariq Williams. Not a bad foul. You don't want to allow easy points. Can't have, can't have easy baskets. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt, winds up the shot, and he makes it. Winding up another free throw. 
He shoots it, and that's a goal for the Lions. Kevin Marcel rushing up the court. He loses the ball there for a second. And that'll be a travel on number zero, Kevin Marcel. Just a careless mistake right there to let the ball get away from him. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt passes the ball back in to Levi Cottrell. Cottrell, rather, my bad. Cottrell passes it to number 32. Number 32 gives it back to Isaac. Isaac shoots for a ball, or shoots for a goal. He misses, and it's recovered by the Lions. Number 24, Levi Cottrell is looking for an open shot. He passes the ball around, and it ends up in Riley Graves' hands. And then goes back to Levi Cottrell, and he tries to go for a shot, and he misses, and are recovered by our Knights. I'm fumbling all over my words tonight. Kevin Marceau goes for a shot, misses, but it's rebounded by Tariq Williams. He passes it to Harris Barker. Harris Barker shoots, and that is not going to be a Knights goal. That'll be a foul on the Lions. That'll bring Harris Barker to the line for three. And right there again, you see the physicality of Tariq Williams once again getting his team another possession, which uh, works out for them well. They're going to have three free throws here, and that's just a great job on the offensive boards. Harris Barker winding up his first free throw shot. He shoots, and that's going to be a Sacred Heart goal. It's a pretty good start to, um, to this game tonight. We already got nine points up on the board. And it's going to be another free throw shot for Harris Barker and our Knights. And uh, I mean, Sacred Heart's come out of the gate shooting on all cylinders. An impressive performance from the line there for Harris Barker. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt passes it in to Riley Graves. Uh, I can't see the number. Really. Riley Graves throwing the ball back in. He gives it to number 20, Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt passes it to Levi Cottrell. And he goes for a goal, but misses, and it's recovered by our Knights. Aiden Madwell shoots a three, and he drains it. There it is. Very deadly shooter from outside. Aiden Madwell, you leave him open, he will make you pay. You get in his face, he does not care. <laughs> Isaac Northcutt trying to figure out what his next plan of attack will be. He rushes the goal, goes up for a layup, and he misses, and it's recovered by the Lions. Riley Graves tries to go for a three. And he misses. And then you see Sacred Hearts really playing. Uh, they're speeding up the tempo, but they're still playing smart. They haven't uh, had a lot of dumb mistakes mm -hmm. that we have have seen in earlier games. They've made some uh, just silly errors, but they're still pushing the tempo, and it, it's really putting a lot of pressure on TCA. Tariq Williams will pass the ball into back in for Kevin Marcel. Kevin Marcel gives it to Aiden Madwell. Aiden Madwell throws it into Kylan Holder. Kylan gives it back to Aiden. Aiden shoots for a three, and that is going to be another three points for our Sacred Heart Knights. Somebody's going to have to get that get out here on, uh, on Aiden Madwell. He's going to make him pay. He's going to uh, happen all night. Eli Cross making some serious moves, and he goes for a layup, and that is going to be two points for the Lions. Kevin Marcel rushing right up to the goal. But he doesn't make the shot, and it's recovered by the Lions. Riley Graves passes it to number one, Eli Cross. And Eli Cross is trying to figure out what his next play is going to be. He gives it to Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt gives it to number, what number is that? I can't see. Number 11, Riley Graves, and he shoots. And he scores. That's going to be three points for the Lions. There's a perfect example of how to use the pump fake, creating space for himself. The ball gets shot around a little bit by our Knights. But there's a foul on the play. Yeah, it'll be a block on number 15, uh, Samuel uh, Favara. So, I mean, what stood out to you tonight so far? What have the Knights done that's helped them get up here at this lead? So far, it's been a pretty, you know, consistent game between our Knights and the Lions. But... Um, I'm really hoping to see some more out of Kevin Marcel and Colin Holder because uh, last week, actually, they had a game at Crockett. We beat them 97-67. to 67. That's going to be three points for Aiden Madwall. 
But yes, it was a very good game, and Kevin Marcel played above and beyond. Tariq Williams rushes the goal, gives it to Kylan Holder. Kylan Holder goes up for a layup, and that's going to be two points for our Sacred Heart Knights. Good defense creates easy offense. You hear it all the time. Kevin Marcel steals the ball from Isaac Northcutt and gives it to Harris Barker. Harris Barker making his way up the court, gives it to Aiden Madwell. Aiden Madwell gives it back. Harris goes for a three, and that is going to be three points for our Sacred Heart Knights. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot tonight. I mean, just wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. From what I've seen, it's just it's threes after three after three. Yeah, I mean, if they don't want to step up and guard them, they're going to keep on shooting. That's TCA is going to have to do something. I mean, that's, what, four, five three-pointers made just this quarter? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's still 241 left. Yeah. There's, the, first, the first quarter's not even over yet. And they're just but punishing them from three. So, uh, Trinity's going to have to make some adjustments right here. I believe this what this timeout is for to stop this run, maybe get some uh, momentum going on offense. But yes, our, our Knights have been very consistent, and um, I, I'm really happy to see the consistency. Yeah, no, I mean, that's something you usually see in this team. They're usually extremely good shooters, and then towards the beginning of the season, they haven't been shooting their best. It hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been their, their, best. their best. And then yeah. right now, it looks like a well-tuned machine. Mm -hmm. Tariq Williams passes it into Kylan Holder. Kylan Holder gives it to Kevin Marcel. Kevin Marcel gives it to Aiden Madwell. He shoots for a three but doesn't make it and it's recovered by the Lions. Eli Cross makes his way up the court. He's getting pressured by two Knights. And he goes up towards the basket and throws the ball over to, what number is that? Number 10, Kevin Davis. There it is, you see him be so physical that all of a sudden Tariq Williams will set his feet and take a charge. Everyone in this gym thought that Tariq was gonna go for that block but he takes one for the team, sets up for a charge and gets them uh, another possession. Tariq Williams is a, is a valuable asset to our team. Extremely selfless. He's a, yeah, extremely selfless. He, he'll just take one and, uh, and just move on with his life and, you know, I hope for the best. I just caught a ball. Yeah, basketball's coming everywhere. <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> if I was you, I definitely would have shot it. Too bad, we didn't, too bad <laughs> we didn't get that in camera. I mean, I don't know. Give it on Isaac Center. Northcutt, uh, he passes it into Riley Graves. Riley Graves is getting pressured by Aiden Madwall. And that'll, that's a uh, double dribble on number 11, Riley Graves. Harris Barker passes the ball into Kevin Marcel. He makes his way up the court. He rushes the basket, and there is a foul called on the play. That'll be a uh, carry on number zero, Kevin Marcel. It's going to turn over to a night to a, not a Knights ball, a Lions ball. Isaac Northcutt passes into Riley Graves. Riley Graves gives it to number. I don't even know what number that is. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking. I'm looking at the roster, not the game. Looks like Trinity will uh, retain possession. Isaac Northcutt. He passes the ball in. Riley Graves has it now. I'm having, a, I'm having some serious difficulty seeing these numbers. But um, number 22, he passes the ball over to 42, back to five. It is Corey Curry. He gives the ball to Riley Graves. Riley Graves gives it back to Corey. Corey's trying to figure out what he's trying to do. He shoots the ball, it's missed, and it's recovered by Tariq Williams, who launches it up to Kylan Holder. Kylan Holder gives it to Harris. Harris rushes the basket, and there's a foul on the play. I missed that one. I, th I believe that'll be a foul on the Knights. Oh, no, 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 no. This is an injury. Uh, TCA player down. I'm not sure what number that is. I'm not able to see who this is. We will let you know as soon as uh, I think it might be number 42, Justin, Justin Moore. Moore. That's what I was thinking. I saw a four. I'm not sure. I hope he's okay. Yeah, no, this is something you never want to see. Just a guy out here, he's having fun playing the game he loves, and it's just sad to see somebody go down like this. Hopefully he's all good. Speaking of injuries, um, 
Dante Williamson, he did something to his meniscus, I think. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. So he will not be playing tonight, unfortunately. I do believe he will be back in. Uh, He'll be back next Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday against FACS, which is. Number 42, Justin Moore. He looks to be okay. I don't, I'm not sure what, exactly what happened. I believe it's something with the uh, left leg. I mean, I, I, I could have told you that. Oh, man. <laughs> look, I'm, I'm going to need you to. call it like I'm you, gonna need it. you to, look, look here, I'm going to need you to lose the attitude a little bit. Hey. Yeah, hey. We're all friends here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's going to be a free throw shot for Harris Barker. He shoots. Ooh, doesn't make it. Lions have the ball. Isaac Northcutt pushes it up the court. He gives it to number 11, Riley Graves. He gives it back to Isaac Northcutt, but Isaac Northcutt doesn't want it. He lets it go out of bounds. And uh, Trinity will retain possession. I think one of our Knights might have, you know, interfered. Yeah, but I think that pass was tipped by Aiden Manuel, if I'm not mistaken. He gives it to Braden Salee. Braden Salee gives it to number 24, Levi Cottrell. He's trying to figure out where exactly he's going to go. He gives it back to Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt getting pressured by Kevin Marcel. He shoots for a goal, but Tariq Williams picks it out of the air, throws it up to Harris Barker, but Harris Barker lose, loses contact of the ball, and it is out of bounds. Just slipped out of the finger. You see Tariq Williams, big guy, gets up by the rims, kind of takes that ball away on its way down. He does need to be careful, though, because if that ball is above the rim, he, and he grabs it, that will be a goal to name. He does need to watch out for that. Reed Chapman will be throwing the ball in to the Lions. He throws it to Riley Graves. Slowly but surely moving up the court, he gives it to number 24, Levi Cottrell. He is trying to find an open shot, but, he, but instead he gives it to number 22. And that'll be a foul on number zero, Kevin Marcel. That'll be uh, his first team third. Number 24 has the ball, Levi Cottrell. He's looking for a shot. He rushes the goal, but nothing happens. That foul will be on number 12, Aiden Madwall. His first team fourth. Sorry I wasn't saying anything a minute ago. I was trying to, I, I looked at number 22 and I looked at my roster and um, it appears that I forgot to write down Samuel Jennings' number who is actually number 22. Speaking of Samuel Jennings, he has the ball and he gives it to Reed Chapman. Reed Chapman goes for a three, but he doesn't make it. It's recovered by the Lions. Number 24, Levi Cottrell goes up for a rebound shot, but he loses it and it's rebounded by our Knights. Kevin Marcel rushes up the court and he tries to go for a layup, but it is inconclusive. Inconclusive. I want to say that was one of my, uh, my vocab words for the week, but it wasn't. It's just a big word that I like to use from time to time. Yeah, I mean, made you sound intelligent. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> it was, nah, it's just good, clean fun. Oh, it appears this is, uh, he was fouled twice. Okay. Or he was fouled, he'll have two free throws over here. He makes the first. He makes the second. It's something awesome. I don't know, when the, uh, was it coming out of a timeout or... Coming off of some sort of break of play, you heard uh, Javion Greer uh, sub into the game, and you hear the student section get really excited. That's what's awesome about Sacred Heart is every time there's a change, the student section gets extremely excited, and I think that's special. You don't really see that a lot of other schools. Mm -hmm. Maybe for one player, maybe the star player, but it's every single guy that comes in. And Javion, not the biggest guy, but goes in, and everybody will tell you, dude, he'll get in there and get those rebounds. It's awesome to see. Yeah, it's, it's really something, you know, something spectacular. Yeah, it's exciting every time. Uh, I was going to ask you something, but it completely slipped my mind, so I'm just going to ignore it. I don't know. I like what I said. It's awesome to see. This Sacred Heart team, very deep, very senior loaded, but you still have some, uh, some sophomores really going in and uh, putting in work. 
Jalen Brown will pass it in to number 11, KB. He, sh he throws it over to Malik. Malik's getting pressured. Oh, Javion, I'm sorry. I got those names mixed up, my bad. Oh, Javion passes, or not passes, he blocks number 11 on the Lions. Number 11 on the Lions gives it to Eli Cross. He shoots for a ball, but he doesn't make it. Harris Barker with the rebound, pushes up the court. He passes it into Mal Nana Malik. Nana Malik gives our Knights another two points on the board. It's pretty easy when you're, what, 6'11"? I don't know, man. Makes He's, it just makes it look easy. <laughs> he can touch the ceiling without even having to stretch his arm all the way. It's pretty crazy. Riley Graves passes the ball. I can't see because the ref's in the way. He passes the ball to number one. Number one gives it to ten but it's recovered by Nana Malik, who gives it to Javion. As he rushes up the court, he passes it to Jalen Brown. He goes up for a layup, but it is out, taken out of bounds. And that ball was a uh, good job by uh, big uh, Nana Malik getting up and down the court, gets back, and is able to grab a rebound. It's very, uh, very impressive for a man that size to get up and down the court. Number 23, Jalen Brown will be throwing the ball back into our Knights. He gives it to Nana Malik. Malik gives it to Javion. And that is going to be a goal by number one. Kendrick Beard. That's, if it is still by number 11, Javion Greer, and he is fouled by number one, uh, Eli Cross. And that's, I mean, Kendrick Beard, he's been out most of the season with a uh, – an ankle injury, I believe, and then one for one coming back. I mean, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Javion's back in the game. Not back in the game. He's, <laughs> he's back got the, a free back throw. Back at the line. <laughs> back at the line with uh, two free throw shots. Shoots the first one, and he makes it. All right, there's $100,000 on the line. Will he make this, yes or no? If he doesn't, you're paying me $100,000. All right. Are you saying yes? Because I'm taking yes. <laughs> I mean, I like to be a conscientious objector, so uh, I'll just stay in the middle. Ooh, that's going to be $100,000 for your boy. Oh, yeah, you can't stay in the middle and uh, get $100,000. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not how that works. Yeah, who's to say? I'm to say. <laughs> <laughs> Levi Cottrell making, making his way up the court. He passes it through Javion's legs to I don't know who that is, but number five. Will go up for a shot and he misses and it's recovered by our Knights. KB making his way up the court. Gives it to Javion. Javion shoots for a three and drains it, giving our Knights three more points on the board. Big shot there by Javion Greer and this Sacred Heart team is shooting extremely well from three points and is pouring it on right now. Riley Graves getting pressured by Javion. He gives the ball to number, who is that? I don't even know. Regardless, he doesn't make the shot. That was number 32, Braden Salee. And this is a tough night right now from Trinity for shooting. They, you can tell they've, they're taking good shots and they just can't get, seem to get it to fall. And uh, Sacred Heart needs to keep adding right now in case those shots do fall. Number 15, Samuel Favara will pass the ball back into Riley Graves. But the ball, Riley Graves goes for a shot and misses and is recovered by Malik. Malik Gives the ball to Javion. Javion gives it to KB. But the Lions steal the ball back. Number five, uh, Corey Curry has the ball currently. And he is passing it all around to the Lions. He gives it to Levi Cottrell. Levi Cottrell gives it to Riley Graves. Riley Graves gives it to number 32. Number 32 gives it to 24. And it's back to number five. I'm trying to figure out what he's, what he's, what he's up to. But uh, I don't really know. I'm just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Braden Salee. Trying to find his next plan of attack. He gives it to number five, Corey Curry, and he drains a three. And there it is. You see, there's a shot to fall. I mean, they've been struggling uh, shooting, and that's uh, that'll be the first one for him. Maybe get some momentum going. Javion brings the ball back for our Knights. He gives it to Kylan Reed. Kylan Reed gives it to uh, Jalen Brown. Then Jalen gives it to Malik, and Malik scores two points for our Knights. Levi Cottrell was 
He was applying a lot of pressure as he made his way up, uh, up the court. Well, he took one too many steps. That will be a travel as uh, Sacred Heart will get uh, possession. <laughs> oh, no, he traveled. Oh, no, he traveled. I was waiting for you to say that. Anyways, Javion brings the ball back in for our Knights. He passes it to Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown goes for a three and drains it, giving our Knights 40 points on the board. And now you just see everybody pulling up from three. I'm ready to see Big Nana from Ghana to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> Levi Cottrell will pass the ball to Samuel Favara, and Samuel Favara will go up for a layup, but he does not make it, resulting in, a, resulting in two free throws for the Lions. I'm telling you, they need to let Malik shoot a three here. That would, I think that's the, I think that's the move. You know, be really nice if they turn on the AC in here. It's pretty hot. Oh, it, I mean, it is kicking in here. I mean, all right. If I was playing, I'd be, I'd be tapping my head. I'm like, I need to come out. I need some water. I mean, it is <laughs> hot. <laughs> I mean, it, it's very, very hot. He makes the second goal, or the second free throw, rather. Javion recovers the ball, gives it to Kylan Reed. Kylan Reed gives it to Nana Malik. He goes up for a shot, but he misses, and it's rebounded by Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown makes a layup, giving our Knights two points. That's extreme athleticism right there, displayed by number 23, Jalen Brown, going up, being the smaller guy, still getting the rebound. Our Knights take the ball back from the Lions, Kylan Reed making his way up to the court. He gives the ball to KB. KB shoots. Ooh, he doesn't make it. Resulting in a Lions ball. I believe they're going to call an over the back on uh, Nana Malik. Number 10, Kevin Davis will be throwing the ball in for the Lions. He gives it to Levi Cottrell. Levi Cottrell gives it to number 22, Samuel Jennings. Samuel Jennings will proceed to give it to 15, but 15 loses the ball, and our Knights take it back. KB makes his way up the court, gives it to Javion. Javion to Kylan. Kylan to Jalen. Jalen shoots for a three, doesn't make it, but it's re recovered by K not KB, Javion, and then Javion gives it to KB. What he shoots for a three, but it is missed. I hate to say I told you, but I, I mean, I told you, Javion's going to get in there and get those rebounds. He's not the biggest guy, but definitely a lot of heart. Everything was happening so fast right there. I was kind of losing track of words. <laughs> I think my mouth was moving a lot faster than my vocal cords. And that's, that's just not a good foul right there by Corey Curry. Puts his hand on the defender. I mean, you can't do that. And him, he did it more than once. I think the... Uh, the referee gave him more than one opportunity, proceeded, proceeded to do it, so they, uh, that's just a stupid turnover. Javion will pass it into KB. KB gives it back to Javion, and then Javion will pass the ball to Nana Malik, who will score two points for our Knights. I mean, that looks like the footwork of uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. It's beautiful. <laughs> Kevin Davis passes the ball to number 30, uh, 33, Sam Weiser. And Jalen Brown will take that ball from Sam Weiser and give two, two more points for our Sacred Heart Knights. I mean, watch the speed by number 23, Jalen Brown. He, zero to 100 in just the blink of an eye. He got that ball and immediately got to the rim and got up there and was able to lay it in with ease. He, I mean, he's a threat running up and down the court. He's really good uh, for pushing the tempo. Mm -hmm. Looks like a very serious game between the Knights and the Lions. Although our Sacred Heart Knights are, are up by 35 points, I believe. It, it's not diminishing the Lions' gameplay at all. They're still playing as hard as they can, and they want this game, and it's it's just great to see. Yeah, good to see ever going both ways. They don't have not slowed down. You can't tell. I mean, for all I know, it could be 35-11 uh, with Trinity with the, with the lead. Reed Chapman will give the ball to number 22. Number 22 goes for a shot but doesn't make it. It's rebounded by our lines. Kylan Reed goes up for a shot after getting the ball from Javion, but he misses, and it's recovered by the Lions. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt has the ball. He makes his way up the court, and he passes it to number, who is that, number 33, Sam Weiser. He shoots, and he does not make it. 
Yeah, I think he thought he had an open shot, and then the dinner plates that are uh, not on Malik's hands <laughs> got in his face. I mean, it's kind of hard to see. Big dude, he was running at you, pretty scary. <laughs> Levi Cottrell will pass the ball to Sam Weiser. Sam Weiser gives it back. He doesn't want any more. Oh, Levi Cottrell doesn't want anymore. He gives it to Sam. Sam gives it back to Levi. They're having a little game of pickle right here, but our Knights take the ball. Kylan Reed will give it to Javion. Javion, uh, Javion passes it to Jalen, and there seems to be a foul. But yeah, that foul will be on Javion Greer, number 11. That's a charge. That's a good Ooh. job getting into the lane, setting his feet, and taking one for the team. I don't want any fouls. You don't want any fouls. No, I don't want to get one. I don't want our Knights to get one either. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I hope you don't get one. If you get one, you probably said some things you probably shouldn't have. If you're on if you're on the side and you're getting a foul. Hey, we're having good, clean fun over here. I mean, it is. <laughs> I'm just hoping you don't get a foul. Riley Graves will pass it to Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt shoots for a three, and it is recovered by Dalton McIntyre. Dalton McIntyre gives it to KB. KB makes his way up the court. Gives it to Kylan Reed. And Kylan Reed gives it to Jalen, but Jalen loses track of it. And then it, Nana Malik scores two points. And there it is, using his size, getting to the basket, and uh, just making it look easy. So I kind of lost track right there. Uh, can't really see the numbers as well. Oh, Riley Graves will shoot and score two points for Lions. That's a good shot. I mean, hand in his face and able to stay steady and knock it down. KB gives the ball to Kylan Reed, and Kylan Reed doesn't want it, so he just gives it to the ref. <laughs> so you can walk by, you hit the ref, so you should have shot it. I mean, I mean, I bet the ref wishes he was playing, but he just isn't. <laughs> Anyways, Riley Graves will pass the ball on to number 20, Isaac Northcutt. He makes his way up the court very slowly but surely. He gives it to Sam Weiser. Sam Weiser doesn't want it, so he gives it to number 32, Braden Salee. I don't even know what that was. He tried to he tried to knock off D-Mac's face. I don't think it was intentional, but that'll be a uh, foul, number 22, Dole McIntyre. You kidding me? He should have swung at him. Should have what? He swung at him. No, he did not swing at him. He was going for the ball. Ah. ah it was a, I don't know. There's a lot, of, a lot of things happening right there. But Reed Chapman has two free throws. Shoots the first one, and he misses. Ball came down with, with a lot of speed. I don't think Nana Malik was expecting it. I mean, I don't think any of us were really expecting to come off that rim uh, that only, hard. It was only one free throw. I'm sorry. It's a Lions ball. Number 11, Riley Graves has it. He passes it across the court to number 20. And number 20 shoots for a three and makes it. And now you're starting to see some of TCA's shots starting to fall. And this is how they probably were wanting to be shooting in the first quarter. And if they hit a shot like this in the first quarter, I think this game might be a little bit uh, closer. KB will pass the ball to D-Mac, also or Dalton McIntyre, but we call him D-Mac around school. Excuse you. But uh, he falls down, resulting in a Lions ball. Isaac Northcutt will pass the ball to Riley Graves. He makes his way up the court. He gives it back to Isaac. And Isaac shoots a three, and he scores. And now this Trinity team is just firing on all cylinders. Man, I wish he had made that shot. Uh, don't go anywhere, guys. Feel free to stay tuned. We are going to display our weekly news broadcast for you if you would like to stay around and watch. I'm Miller Boyd. I'm Grace Creasy. Welcome to Night Vision. Today we will be discussing many things that are happening throughout school in the next coming weeks from tests to exams. We just got off Thanksgiving break. How was yours? I was, it was good. How about you? It was nice. I just hung out with my brother mostly. He's back in town, but he went back. Um, anyways, coming up in school, we only have six days left. So any tests that you need to make up, any homework that you haven't done, I suggest you get it done. Uh, other than that, we got our exam schedule. And our exam schedule will be next Monday we have a full day of classes, and then Tuesday the 11th we'll have first and second period exams. 
Wednesday the 12th will be third and fourth period exams, and Thursday the 13th will be fifth and sixth, and Friday the 14th will be the seventh period exams. There's also play tryouts next Monday and Tuesday. And now we will go to Caitlin about the new rules. Thank you, Grace. This is Caitlin Gill from Sacred Heart Light Vision. I'll be talking about the new rules that were issued this week. You are not allowed to be out of uniform or that will be issued in a demerit. You must wear your school shirt underneath your SHJ jackets during school. Boys must wear ties. No headphones during school except in Miss Cole's art room because she has been given permission by Miss Kale. If they are found, they will be taken away. No bringing Starbucks or Sonic cups dur during school. Only clear water bottles are allowed. Thank you, Caitlin, for giving us the update on the rules this week. And following up on that, our study body has expressed its concerns with our, new, with our winter uniforms. And so now we will go to Jake Wilson for our report on the uniforms. Thanks, Miller. Thanks, Grace. Hi, this is Jake Wilson from Night Vision. And over the past week, I've asked 10 different members of our student body if they like our uniforms or not. And they said that they were all, uh, they were okay. But then I thought, what could we change about that? And next week, I'll have that for you. Thank you, Jake Wilson, for your update on the winter uniforms. And we'll see you next week with your new ideas on what kind of uniforms we should be wearing in the coming year. Okay, and now we will go to Breezy Bray for our weekly weather update. Thank you, Grace. Good morning, Sacred Heart. It is Breezy Bray here with the weather forecast. Temperatures will start warming back up on Thursday, and the highs and the lows in the mid-50s. Rains will enter our forecast while temperatures will continue warming up into a trend Friday into Saturday with the highs in the 60s on Friday and reaching into low 70s. Keep a close eye on this 24-hour period because there may be severe weather hitting our area. Sunday... The sun comes back up, temperatures will return to the mid-60s. However, by Sunday night, temps dip back down to the 40s again. Back to you, Grace. Thanks, Breezy, for the weather update. And now on to Blake Biggs and Will Walker for sports. Hi, I'm Blake Biggs. I'm Will Walker. And we're here with Night Vision to recap this week in sports. Saturday, as we were enjoying our Thanksgiving leftovers, we played Corneth in a tough battle where we only lost by three, 55-52. Then the next Monday, we played Crockett County and we won 97-67. Our girls also played Crockett County, but we ended it up coming short. This Friday, the Knights will take on TCA. Then the following Monday, the girls will have a uh, home game against Madison Academic. Then that following Tuesday, December 4th, both teams will go down to FACS and on, uh, on the road open up their district play. And then Friday will be a huge rivalry game against USJ, and that is December the 7th. And thank you, Blake Biggs and Will Walker, for that great sports update. And now we will be moving on to it with an interview with a silver-haired man named Mr. Ed, as we like to call him around school. I will be interviewing him about just who he is as a person and everything that he does. I mean, he helps us out around school more than we can appreciate him for and so I just figured I should give him an interview and see what what he's all about. I'm Miller Boyd here with Ed Salonis and we are in Mr. Ed's office. Mr. Ed, how long have you been uh <laughs> how long have you been working here at Sacred Heart? Year and a half. Mm -hmm. Almost two. I started in uh, April 16th. Mm -hmm. So it's close to three now. Um, so what exactly do you do around our school? Whatever I am told to do. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I am just keep making sure everything is, is running properly. Mm -hmm. If something needs fixed, I'll fix it. If I can't, then uh, we'll find somebody. But most of the time, I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And most of the freshmen uh, don't remember Mr. Red the year before now. But he used to have long, flowing, luscious, silver white hair. Uh -huh. So what, what prompted the change, Mr. Red? I got tired of it. Really? I did. I did. Um, I was going to do it if LSU beat Alabama, and then they didn't, that didn't happen. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is an old look. I mean, this is what mm -hmm. I used to wear before that. Mm -hmm. I've been wearing a flat top for years and a goatee. You know, that's, that's cool. 
So, I mean, you maintain the school and you got to maintain yourself. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, uh -huh. so what's, your, what's your favorite part about your day-to-day -day at Sacred Heart? There's nothing normal. There's nothing that I do every day same thing. Mm -hmm. There's something different every day. That's awesome. It is. Uh, favorite thing would be actually be working on the ball fields. <laughs> really just cutting grass and hanging out? Cutting grass. That's awesome. All right, well, I'm Miller Boyd, and I'm here with Ed Salonis, and this is Night Vision. Welcome back to the broadcast, everybody. I hope you like that, uh, that news segment right there. Uh, I mean, that was an extremely uh, good first half, and very exciting. Mm -hmm. So now, now that we know everything that's going on around school, um, Will Walker, what are, your, what are your personal thoughts on the uniforms? No, I mean, hold on. Actually, I'm about to go to an interview with uh, Coach Nick Brown, but I apologize. Oh, you're going to leave me here all alone? I will be back. Okay. All right, guys, I guess I'll just I'll talk to you for a little bit by myself. Oh, no, goodbye. All right, so I'm Will Walker with uh, Sacred Heart Night Vision. I'm with Coach Nick Brogard. And, uh, Coach, what are some uh, – is there any adjustments y'all wanted to make during half? Uh, no, we just want to keep the same confidence we came out with in the first half and just, you know, keep believing in ourselves. And, like I said, keep playing hard 32 minutes. Uh, so, I mean, what has impressed you uh, through the first half? Is there anything that you worked on during the week that uh, showed in this game? Well, actually getting the ball out in transition, you know, getting the open shots. And it's good to see uh, Aiden Matwal, you know, coming out with a lot of confidence. I think he went four for five, four for six in the uh, first quarter. So that was pretty, you know, pretty good. All right, well, thank you, Coach. Uh, uh, wish you best of luck in the second half. All right, thanks. Very good interview with you and Coach Beauregard, I think. Is that yeah, the Coach Beauregard, and uh, it's really exciting to see. You did mention uh, the shooting, and it's very good to see the Sacred Heart team, who's always been a very good shooting team, start to click on all cylinders. We've had, like I said earlier, they haven't been bad, but they're definitely uh, have improved this game, and they're getting back to a uh, the normal team we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is looking out to be a very good game for our Knights. I'm very excited to see what occurs in the second half. Yeah, I mean, but we did see a glimpse. TCA put up, uh, what, probably eight, ten quick points mm -hmm. right at the very end of the uh, first or the first half. I apologize at the uh, very end of the first half, and it's uh, just. Uh, I hope we get to see some more more intensity like that in the uh, second half from T, uh, from TCA. Well, I feel like they didn't change a single thing except for the shot started to fall, and that's what uh, that's the thing about basketball. Some some nights the shots just aren't falling. Javion will have the ball to open up the second half. There is a foul on the. I want to say the, the lion. <laughs> I actually don't believe it's fouling. That's going to be technical difficulties. Oh, okay. I believe the clock wasn't running when uh, they inbounded the ball. KB will throw the ball into Javion. Javion gives it to Nana Malik. He rushes the basket, but he ends up giving the ball to Kyler Reed, who makes two points for our Knights. And that's good IQ right there by the big man. Um, able to see over everybody, able to see the floor very well. Eli Cross will give it to number 20. Number 20 will give it to number 
Uh, he will give it to number, I don't, I don't even know, 32, Braden Salee, but he gives it back to Eli Cross. Number 11, Riley Graves will be throwing the ball back in for the TCA Lions. Just a little discussion between two players and resume play. Eli Cross has the ball. He makes his way up the court, giving the ball to Riley Graves. He is pressured by the Knights. Kylan Reed takes the ball and throws it, but there is a call. Um, That'll be a uh, push on the uh, TCA Lions. Second heart will retain possession. Nana Malik has the ball after receiving it from KB, who threw it in. But the Knight, not the Knights, the Lions stole the ball from our Knights. We, we can see Eli Cross making his way up the court. He gives it to Isaac Northcutt, who rushes the, the goal. But um, the, the Knights end up taking the ball back from the Lions. Javion will give the ball to Kylan Reed. Kylan Reed gives it to KB. He rushes the basket. And, uh, and he shoots, but he, unfortunately he doesn't make it, resulting in a Lions rebound. Eli Cross has the ball now. He rushes the basket, but he gives it to number 15, Samuel Favara, and he shoots and gives the Lions two more points on the board. You can see uh, Trinity starting to kind of slow it down just a little bit, being more patient, looking for a good shot, not settling early in the, uh, early in the possession. Kylan Reed shoots for a three-pointer, but he does not make it. The Lions take the ball, but our Knights quickly take it back from them. Javion rushes the basket, and he goes up for a layup, but he does not make it. And that's a hard foul, making sure the basket does not go in, and Javion Greer takes a shot right there. He'll uh, bring him up to the line for two. That'll give the Knights two free throws. Javion Greer setting up his first free throw shot. He shoots, wait, not yet, uh, got a little, little ahead of myself. He shoots now and he makes it. As you can see, second has been extremely consistent from the line all night. He winds up his next shot, he shoots it, and that will be another point for the Knights. The Lions have the ball now. Eli Cross making his way up the court slowly but surely, and he encounters a Dalton McIntyre. But he gives the ball to number 20, Isaac Northcutt. He shoots a three, and it is rebounded, rebounded by our Knights. Dalton McIntyre gives it to Javion Greer. Javion Greer makes his way up the court, gives it to Kylan Reed. Kylan Reed goes for a two-pointer. He misses it, and Nana Malik takes the ball back. But I think he steps out of, bound, out of bounds at some point. I mean, earlier we were talking about those dinner plates he has for hands. He grabbed that ball out of the air, just one hand, mm -hmm. palmed it, and no problem. Kylan Reed throws the ball into Nana Malik. But, it, but the Lions steal the ball. Number 11, Riley Graves, has the ball right now. He gives it to number 32, Braden Salee. Braden Salee gives it back to him. He goes for a three-pointer, and Nana Malik takes it out of the air. Dalton McIntyre makes his way up to the basket. He goes up for a layup, but he does not make it. That will uh, be a travel uh, unfortunate there for the uh, young sophomore. Dalton McIntyre. <laughs> D-Mac. Eli Cross, he is slowly but surely Ooh. making his way up the court. He almost steps out of bounds, so he has to throw the ball back in. Nana Malik takes it from the Lions and gives it to D-Mac. D-Mac gives it to KB. He shoots for a three, but he does not make it. Kylan, uh, Kylan Reed recovers the ball, and he goes for a shot and does not make it. Braden Salee and Javion got in a little tussle right there, resulting in a Lions ball. I believe that's a... Uh or is that a ninth ball? No, that, that will be a foul on Javion Greer. As you see, number 25, the junior, 
Will Kale uh, sub into the game. Nice to see that uh, Will Kale's finally get some PT in the varsity games. Yeah, no, I mean, with that arm injury, it's been tough for him to get in. Mm -hmm. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt goes for a three-pointer, but he does not make it, and it is rebounded by our Knights. Dalton McIntyre gives it to KB. KB gives it to Javion. Jav Javion gives it to Will Kale. He goes for a three, but unfortunately he does not make it, and it is rebounded by our Knights. And there, I mean, just settles, gets, gets an open shot. It's not able to knock it down. That's still great passing, setting up an open shot by the Sacred Heart Knight offense. Will Kale will be throwing the ball in for the Knights. He gives it to Javion. Javion throws it over some Lions to KB. He goes for a three-pointer. Doesn't make it, but Malik, not on Malik. Grabs the ball out of the air in hopes of making another ball, but it's, it just keeps getting tossed up and thrown right back down. You see Javion Greer, once again, not the biggest guy. He gets down in the paint and is able to get another rebound. And what is that, four tonight? Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, it's extremely impressive. He'll get in there and he'll fight them. I mean... He doesn't care if he's going against someone Malik's size or someone his size. He's going to get in there and he's going to fight for it. Will Kell makes his first free throw shot. And that has to feel good. He'll be able mm -hmm. to uh, make his first varsity basket this year since that uh, he did have that arm injury. Uh, unfortunately, he does not make his second shot and he's recovered by the Lions. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt making his way up the court. He tries to throw the ball to a, another player. That would be Samuel Favara. But um, the ball is lost, resulting in a Knights ball. As you can oh, see. Nope. nope. Never mind, the Lions ball. Number 10, Trey Troll is going to sign into or uh, sub into the game. I mm -hmm. apologize. He will pass it to Corey Curry. Will Kale applying a little bit of pressure here and there. Corey Curry goes up for a shot, and Will Kale just picks it out of his hand. But there is a foul on the play. And uh, that will be a foul. And you can see Sacred Heart wasn't really happy, and neither was Will Kale with that call. But maybe got a little bit of his arm uh, from behind him. It's just a play that could go either way. Corey Curry will miss his first free throw shot. As he winds up for the second one, he shoots it, and that will be unsuccessful. And the Knights get the ball. Uh, Trey, he shoots it, but he does not make it. He recovers, gives it to D-Mac. D-Mac throws it to Javion. Javion's looking for his next move to make. The Lions take the ball back, but Will Kell says no, sir, and takes it back from him. They lose the ball. There's a foul on the play. And the uh, Lions will get possession. That foul will be on number 25, Will Kale. That'll be his second. We can see number 11 making his way up the court. He passes it to number 20, Isaac Northcutt. He shoots, but he misses, and Corey Curry re uh, rebounds the ball. He gives it back to Isaac Northcutt. He makes his way up to the, up to the goal. He shoots it and gives the Lions another two points on the board. Javion Greer. He has the ball. Oh, that that did not look good. There definitely should have been a play, or sh definitely should have been a foul called right there. Well, I mean, I think everybody's kind of went up aggressive, and uh, sometimes you won't get a foul. The referees will let everybody kind of get in there. And most physical wins. Mm -hmm. Riley Graves will be throwing the ball back in for the Lions. I can hear that guy squeaking, squeaking his shoe on the floor all the way from over here. Yeah, those are some squeaky shoes. Um, the, um, the floor is a little bit wet. They're having to clean it up before they start the next play. Well, everybody's extremely sweaty because it's 975 degrees in here. 
If it was that hot, we'd all be dead. There's a timeout called. That uh, will be uh, Trinity taking that timeout. But like I was saying, it's hot in here. I mean, I'm not playing. I'm sitting down at a table. I'm still. I, I'm sweating. And I'm sweating. I'm wearing a T-shirt and a floral shirt because uh, it is tropical theme tonight for our Sacred Heart student section. And I am still, you know, I'm still sweating just a little bit. Yeah, I couldn't imagine me running up and down. I blame the humidity, the rain. Yeah, I, I don't know what to blame. But it's hot. <laughs> it was, it's strange. Um, I, like, I hadn't looked at the news or anything at all yesterday. And I walked outside last night to go eat dinner with my dad. And I, I, could, just, I could just feel the rain in the wind. You know, I, I could just feel like the wind felt wet. If that makes sense, and then when I, when I got home that night, it was like later that night it started raining, and I, I don't know. I think if the wind feels wet, it's probably raining. No, it wasn't raining at that moment, but I, I could tell that it was about to start raining. So it's humid. No, you're not picking up what I'm putting down. I don't believe I am. <laughs> Whatever. Riley Graves makes his way up the court, and he passes it to Isaac Northcutt. Isaac Northcutt rushes. The basket, he gives it to Samuel Favara. He, he, he goes for a goal, but he does not make it. It is rebounded by our Knights. Javion Greer has the ball. He gives it to Trey Troll. He gives it back to Javion. Javion passes it to DMAC. DMAC goes up for a two pointer, doesn't make it. Braden Salee rebounds the ball. Corey Curry gives it to number 11, Riley Graves. He then passes it to Braden Salee. Braden Salee trying to figure out his next move. He gives it to Samuel Favara, who goes for a shot but is unsuccessful. It is rebounded by our Knights. Will Kale has the ball now after a weird play by the TCA Lions. Nana Malik tries to save it, but uh, unfortunately he is unsuccessful. Both defenses just kind of going back and forth right now. You're not seeing a lot of baskets. Both teams are uh, getting physical. And you now I think you're going to have to see the score deadlock just a little bit. And uh, someone's going to have to go either way. Someone's going to pull ahead right here, I believe. <laughs> Riley Graves making his way up the court, giving it to Isaac Northcutt. I feel like I'm saying these guys' names over and over again, but uh, whatever. Samuel Favara now has the ball. He's getting pressured by Will Kale. Samuel Favara passes it to number 20. Number 20 gives it to Brayden Salee. Brayden Salee gives it to Riley Graves. Riley Graves says, I don't want it anymore. He gives it to Kevin Davis. Kevin Davis, Kevin Davis gives it back to Isaac. They're, just playing, they're all playing a game of pickle out here, just passing it back and forth. But Samuel Favara will go up for a shot and make it. And right now you'll see Sacred Heart has three freshmen and a sophomore in right now. Going to kind of see what they can do against varsity level competition. Isaac Northcutt will pass the ball into uh, Samuel Favara. Samuel Favara will give it to Kevin Davis. He goes for a two pointer, but it's unsuccessful. And that'll be a, a foul on TCA line. Sacred Heart will retain possession. You know, I'm not feeling very satisfied with this game so far. I haven't seen any um, Fibonacci swirls, and it's kind of it's kind of hurting my feelings. I believe uh, I believe there might be one in the near future. You know, you got Trey Troll, Xander Taylor, both very good athletes, capable of doing some crazy things. There's a lot of confusion in the play right there. But uh, Xander had the ball at one point, and now he doesn't anymore. Uh, don't forget about uh, Will Kale and uh, Dalton. They're both of them. I imagine they both have great Fibonacci swirls. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even touch rim. I'm not saying that to like be mean or anything, but I mean, you know, they, they just don't have the vertical. Oh, you can spin around. I can spin around there, and I can't touch around. Eh, who knows? Regardless, Trey Troll will go, will shoot his first, or his only free throw shot. It's unsuccessful. Will Kale has the ball. He gives it to DMAC. There's only five seconds left on the board. DMAC makes two points for our Sigurd Heart Knights. And there. Yeah, he hit the shot clock. <laughs> he drills the shot clock at the top <laughs> of the basket now, I mean. It's bonus points. Yeah, little 
You know the little box behind uh, the rim? That mm -hmm. you, your parents always say, hit the middle of that box. Well, if that little box was that shot clock, that, that basketball definitely would have fell in. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that. He went ahead and squared it up. I think the reason why I was so bad at basketball is because my dad always said, hit the box, and I just threw it at the backboard because, you know, it's a box. So I, I guess that's probably why I wasn't the, uh, the greatest um, basketball player in my early days. Yeah, I mean. Plus, I was like three feet tall. I think my problem was uh, I, I was about this high right now in uh, about third grade. Really? Uh, yeah, I was about I was about like nah, five ten ish in third grade. But I was tall all the way through elementary school, and then came fifth grade. Time to play some middle school basketball. <laughs> and coach was like, "All right, you're not tall anymore. Time to play point guard." Uh -oh. And I could not dribble that, and I could not shoot. <laughs> so my ba my basketball career kind of fell off. I, I mean, I was in elementary school. I was having fun. I was the big man. I was getting rebounds and throwing it out. Cause everybody else could shoot, I couldn't shoot. I think that's my problem. Uh oh, we experienced some technical difficulties right there. We went muted for a second, but we're we're okay now. Let's see. Uh, Ty Allen will line up for a uh, pair of free throws. He winds up for his first free throw shot. He shoots it, and he makes it. The ball did its own kind of Fibonacci swirl right there. I feel like he just wanted to say that word. I did. It's trademark. Patent pending. He shoots his second free throw shot and is unsuccessful, resulting in a Lions ball. Uh, number 22 goes up for a shot, doesn't make it. Xander tries to recover it, but he loses it out of bounds. You see, the ball's coming off extremely hot off these rims, and it's kind of, uh, you've seen it multiple times, both teams struggling to get a rebound because the ball's coming off so quick. Number one, Eli Cross has the ball. He rushes the basket, but he jukes him out and just throws it to number 20, um, Isaac Northcutt, who shoots a three, but does not make it. It's good to see uh, Samuel Jennings Back in the game. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I got my numbers mixed up right there. I thought, never mind. <laughs> I thought Samuel Jennings was the one who got hurt previously. And there you see uh, Dalton McIntyre getting down low, getting physical. Trey Troll rushes the basket, and unfortunately, he does not make a goal. It is fourth period, 56 for our Knights, 24 for the Lions. I'm curious to see, I mean, will the Sacred Heart Knights keep their consistency from the free throw line? They've been extremely consistent all night. Trey Troll shoots his first and last uh, free throw shot right there. Not last, I mean, it's the only one he had anyways, but um, I don't even know what I'm saying, man. I'm just rambling at this point. But the Lions, they go up for a shot and are unsuccessful, resulting in a foul. That foul, I believe, will be on the floor, so that point will not count, and uh, the uh, Lions will have to inbound. Number 20, Isaac Northcutt passes the ball into Samuel Jennings. He shoots and he scores. The Knights, uh, Xander, he, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fumbling all over my words right now. <laughs> Will Kill has the ball. I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Uh-oh. Knights lose the ball, and the Lions take it back. And number 11, Riley Graves, shoots, and he makes a layup. Our Knights try to pass the ball across the court, and... Um, we lose it out of bounds. That's just a silly mistake. It uh, just slips out of the fingers of Ty Allen and just one you wish you could kind of take it back. Lions have the ball right now. Number one, Eli Cross goes up for a layup and he misses. 
Xander goes up for a, another goes up for a layup as well, and he also is unsuccessful. The Lions take the ball back. Number 22, Samuel Jennings has the ball. He is he is playing very aggressive, but he got blocked out by Trey Troll. And I believe this is a uh, goodness full substitution for the uh, Trinity Lions, and they're going to put in a uh, whole new rotation. Braden Salim smacked the mess out of that table when he was uh, what is that subbing called? in. Is that called a platoon swap? I think so. Platoon. Anyways, Samuel Favara will go for a three-pointer and is unsuccessful. But I'm serious, man. He just he smacked his hand as hard as he could on that table and scared that, that woman. It's kind of funny, though. Scared the table. <laughs> hurt the, he hurt the table. Mm -hmm. Probably hurt himself, too. He probably wouldn't. Reed Chapman will give the ball to Kevin Davis. Kevin Davis will give it to uh, Corey, Corey Curry, who then gives it back, who then gives it to Samuel Favara, who shoots and makes a makes two points for the Lions. Xander will pass the ball to Trey Troll, and he loses it out of bounds, resulting in a Lions ball. Or resulting in a free throw, rather. My bad. Nope. Wait, what happened? I don't even know what uh, happened. I believe that was a foul on number 15, Samuel, uh, Samuel Favara. And so uh, Trey Troll will get two free throws. Uh, I didn't see. I mean, I was looking, but I guess I just didn't see that. My bad, guys. He shoots his first free throw, and he makes it. He winds up for the second one. He shoots, and he scores, giving two more points for our Knights. Reed Chapman making his way up the court, trying to figure out what he is up to. He gives the ball to Corey Curry, who rushes the basket, has a layup, and makes it, giving the Lions two more points on the board. He plants that foot and gets to the rim and uh, really explodes. He's able to get there very quick. He goes to 0 to 100 very fast. And impressive move right there by uh, Corey Curry. Trey Troll will make two more points for our Sacred Heart Knights. Well, uh, I actually believe that was a foul before he uh, was before he scored, so those points actually won't count. Ah, that's unfortunate. Anyways, Lions have the ball. Reed Chapman will give it to Corey Curry, who will drain a three-pointer. It's nice to see some of the um, the underclassmen out here on the court. We got we got. I believe three freshmen and some a sophomore and a junior. Yeah, it's good to see them get in, and you see these guys, and they'll be in the JV game or come in the very end of a varsity game. But it's fun to see how these guys uh, play an actual game. They've been in here this whole half. The Lions they go for a three-pointer and miss it, and is recovered by the Knights, and we we will get two points from Xander. We almost lost the ball, or the ball almost went out of bounds, and Will Kell recovered it, throwing it back in, but the Lions decided they weren't having it, so they took the ball back. That was a uh, great defensive possession by Dalton McIntyre. So he, on one of those balls, whenever he smoked that brick wall, top of the uh, kneecap, <laughs> probably, probably didn't feel good. I mean, the brick wall usually wins. <laughs> I take that back. The brick wall always wins. <laughs> There's a foul in play. That'll bring number four, Ty Allen, up to the line. Shoot two. Ty Allen setting up his first free throw shot. He shoots. Ah, and he misses. I was really wanting him to make that shot. I was really wanting them to slap the table when they subbed in. <laughs> I was hoping the guys can see some crazy. Come on, do it. No. Nope. That scared me. Scared me, the table, the lady. He winds up for his second free throw shot. He shoots it, and he makes it, giving our Knights one point on the board. Reed Chapman will pass the ball to Kevin Davis. He's getting pressured by Kylan Reed. He doesn't want the ball anymore, so he gives it to number 22. Or no, yeah, 
22. Uh, Samuel Jennings who goes up for a shot and makes it. Uh, this will be a one and one. Uh, a it'll foul on Will Kell. Yeah, it'll, it'll appear that uh, the Trinity uh, Lions are in the bonus, so they will get a one and one free throw right here. Samuel Jennings will make his free throw shot. The first free throw shot. He shoots his second free throw, and he makes it. Xander making his way up the court. He gives the ball to William Kale. William Kale goes for a three, but is unsuccessful, and the Lions will take the ball back. Reed Chapman will pass the ball to Kevin Davis, and Kevin Davis will drain a three-pointer. Xander throws the ball all the way across the court to Kylan. Kylan gives it to Ty. And Ty goes up for a layup, giving our Knights two more points on the board. There you see the freshman getting down low and uh, finishing with some authority. Braden Salee getting pressured by some Knights, giving the Knights the ball. Yeah, that'll be a double dribble, and that's just a uh, mistake that you're not, you, you can't make in these games. Xander will give the ball to Trey Troll. Trey Troll will rush the basket. But he loses the ball, giving it back to the Knights. Not the Knights, the Lions, I'm sorry. At number 10, Kevin Davis will go up for a two-pointer, and it's unsuccessful. Our Knights take the ball back. Kylan Reed rushes the basket and makes two more points for our Knights. That wasn't a Fibonacci score. That was, it was pretty close. That was very beautiful. I mean, he sees the guy, sees the defensive player set up for the charge, and maneuvers his way around him in an extremely impressive play. Our Knights take the ball back. Trey Troll drops it. Oh, my goodness! He makes those two points, but he absolutely gets tackled. We're not playing football out here, guys. We're playing basketball, and that, that is not allowed. I'm surprised that there wasn't a foul called. He straight up clotheslined him and brought him down on that hardwood floor. That is not fun. You know, you, like, you see the WWE and Hulk Hogan come bounces off one of the ropes and then just knocks the dude's head off. That was RKO out of nowhere. Xander will pass the ball to Kylan Reed. Kylan Reed shoots for a three-pointer. It's unsuccessful. Will Kell. <laughs> will Kell will get the rebound, and uh, he loses it. But thank goodness for Bray Finney, our cameraman. He caught the ball and gave it back to our, uh, gave it back to our refs. I just want to take a take a quick minute right here while this play is unfolding to thank our sponsors, um, Bone and Joint, West Tennessee Bone and Joint, West Tennessee Bone and Joint, for sponsoring our broadcasting program. Um, we really appreciate their support, and um, you know, and they help us do what we do along with Paul Schultz at Worthy Road Studios. You know, if it weren't for if it weren't for him and Chuck Walker. This whole class would not be what it is right now. We got Chuck Walker, the man with the plan, and Paul Schultz. Hold up, I got. Uh, with the production equipment. I believe that was a, uh, a travel. Oh, no. Oh, no, you travel. You cannot do that. You travel. As important as this game is, I feel like our sponsors are equally as important. So I felt, you know, it was necessary to thank them and. You know, it's always it's always well deserved for our our teacher um, Chuck Walker to get a, a thanks here and there, as well as Paul Schultz for everything that they do for us. Kylan Reed sets up his first free throw shot. He makes it. 56 seconds left in this game. 68 points for our Knights, and uh, I believe that's going to be still 68 points because he does not make his second free throw, unfortunately. Oh no! Ty Allen blocks a shot. Reed Chapman just absolutely panicking, throwing the ball around. The Lions don't know what's going on right now, and neither do I. I mean, that's just. Wow, there's a lot of chaos there for 10 seconds. 
Uh, you have a block shot, and mm. ball goes this way, that way, this way, that way. It's going back and forth, and kind of, you kind of lose it. Number 33, Sam Weiser will be uh, doing the Lions' free throw shots. He misses the first one, unfortunately. Let's see if he can make the second one. He shoots the second one, and that, ooh, that is an air ball. I can hear the student section chanting air ball right now. But he gets a third try. He shoots, and he does not make it. Our Knights take the ball back with less than 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Trey Allen, not Trey Allen, Trey Troll rushes the basket, and he gets taken, he gets shut down. That uh, Colin Reed getting an offensive rebound, setting his feet, and then uh, getting inside and drawing a foul. Colin Reed with free throw shots. I think there might be two. 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 Okay. Dose. He makes his first free throw shot, giving our Knights 69 points and the Lions 40 points. He sets up his second shot, he shoots, and he scores. Less than 30 seconds left on the board. Let's see what the Lions have left in store. Kevin Davis making his way around the court. He hands the ball off to number 21, Ross. I don't know how to say his last name, I'm sorry guys. Uh, Reed Chapman goes for a two pointer, but he unfortunately does not make it. Xander. Has the ball for our Knights. Let's see what he has in store with three, two, one seconds left in the game. The game is over. 70 points for our Sacred Heart Knights, 40 for the Lions. Very intense game. What are your thoughts, Will Walker? Uh, just great job by Sacred Heart coming in, doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, not Keeping this game out of control the whole time, keeping um, – keeping the fire throughout the whole game. and Great uh, game by uh, Trinity. They Early in the game, they didn't have many shots falling, went into half with not very many points, and then came out and you know knocked down some shots, made some um, good plays, and extremely impressive. They uh, never gave up. And I say this at the end of every single game that we have broadcasted and every single game that I've attended, regardless of the points on the board, who do you think – would have won tonight based on pure sportsmanship and pure intensity. I mean, both teams were uh, very uh, intense. They played the whole entire game. So I mean, just sitting here watching, if you know, I didn't, I didn't know the points. I would have definitely said it could have gone either way. I felt like our Knights played very intense. We did not underestimate the TCA Lions one bit. They played a terrific game tonight and it was it, it was fun to come out here and just watch and have have this experience but yeah, um, it's equally as fun you know now that we can actually see our student section up close and see them getting uh, hyped up and see the intensity in our students and our student bo our student body yeah it's rather. fun to see everybody kind of getting behind the basketball team getting extremely excited and just fun to see how this Whole school supports uh, one another, and anytime someone subs in, everyone gets extremely excited. It's fun to watch. Yeah, it's it's great, and um, I just want to take another quick minute to thank our sponsors, uh, West Tennessee Bone and Joint. So thank you for sponsoring us. You are you are helping us improve our overall consistency in our work and our broadcasts. And, you know, just making things just better in general. So we want to thank West Tennessee uh, Bone and Joint. Yeah, and it's extremely awesome. Every experience I've had there, and there's uh, there's nothing else I could ask for. They have found out what I needed and gotten me uh, all the right treatment, and it's, uh, they do, do a very excellent job there. Mm -hmm. That's where I usually go to get my, uh, my physical uh, right before football season. But enough about football. We're at a basketball game, so let's talk a little bit more about basketball. You know, just like I said, good, great job by Sacred Heart coming out here and getting what they needed to do done. And that, 
This is a good game, winning by 30, mm -hmm. going into a district game this Tuesday at FACS on the road. This is good momentum to have for that. How do you think the rest of the season will be looking for our Sacred Heart Knights? Well, tonight, I mean, we did see some little problems with the shooting. They weren't – they were shooting okay, but they weren't shooting how they would wish to. They wasn't mm -hmm. to their full potential. And then tonight, Aiden Badwa, Harris Barker, Kevin Marcel, all of them made an uh, extremely big improvement in um, – in the three-point shooting, and it looked a lot more like the Sacred Heart Knights were used to. It was nice to see that at the beginning of the game, we had all of our upperclassmen, you know, kind of getting points on the board. And then when when Coach Beauregard and Coach Dodson, they felt comfortable with, you know, with our with our players and the points that we had scored, they decided to put in some underclassmen and let them get some PT and get some experience in a varsity game. And honestly, I am. I didn't underestimate the underclassmen. I knew that their potential was through the roof, and I knew that this was going to be a good game. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's good to see the depth. I mean, you have uh, – it's good to see for next year because this – I mean, this is an extremely senior-loaded team. Mm -hmm. I believe, what is it, eight seniors, seven, eight seniors? Uh, all of them – are in uh, that's it, the starting rotation. Mm -hmm. They all get in uh, every single game, and it's fun to see what we have in store for us next year. We get little glimpses, and uh, I'm excited to see how these players mature over uh, over just over this short year. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. My cameraman is telling me to wrap it up at least. Bray Finney, he's the one who saved the ball earlier in the game. Um, but yes, I think we are going to wrap it up and call it a night. If you enjoyed, please like us on Facebook and check us out on YouTube. I think we'll, we, we will be uploading this broadcast and the female basketball game broadcast on our YouTube channel. You can check us, check us out at Night Vision 38305, on, and that will be the same, I think, the same username for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Check us out on there and uh, like all of our stuff and stick around because we will have plenty more broadcasts ranging from basketball to when baseball season comes around, we will have baseball and med many other things. But with that all said, I'm Miller Boyd. I'm Will Walker. Welcome to, nope, oh, not welcome to Night Vision. We are Night Vision. Y'all have a good night.